at about 20 minutes of 8. I watched the Red Sox till I got caught up, and then I went to the Patriots. Watched that till I got caught up. It was halftime, I went back to the Red Sox, and it wasn't quite over, I went back to the Patriots. I don't like commercials. <laughs> we, de we DVR so that we can zzz through the commercials. <laughs> And I don't go on Facebook because someone will end up posting the, the final score on Facebook before I get a chance to see it. <laughs> it's like last year in the playoffs. My brother-in-law calls. Minnesota won. Minnesota won. This is I haven't finished watching. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, thanks. I used to cheer for him, but not so much. It was my second team. Yeah, because he used to live in Minnesota. Some soldier doing the budget? Am I what? Are you going to be the lonesome one doing the budget? No. No. Celia will be here. <laughs> Celia's taking on the team portion of it. So she'll, I hope she'll be here. <laughs> she usually gets here like a quarter of. Just wait for her husband to get home. For the kids. Um, probably something to make it. So, so, Celia will be doing it on her behalf. <coughs> Alright, it's 6.30. I'm going to call the... Uh, actually, I'm not yet. I need to call... Denise Knowles is under the weather this evening, so she would ask if she's space via phone, so let me get her on the phone before we open the meeting. Hey Denise, it's Mike and Miles. How are you? I'm okay. Let me see you. I have that. Hold on. Okay. Can you hear me? I can. We can. I yep. Think. All right. So we're going to call the order of the uh, October 15th Select Board meeting. Um, Vice uh, Chair Knowles is uh, under the weather and participating from home this evening. So, and she will probably be on for as long as um, she can, I'm imagining. If we go like, if it's a long meeting, I don't think it will be, but one never knew. So, um, the, uh, the CIP that we were going to take up tonight, we're going to do on Saturday. Is that okay. As long as there's no I objection. Need a hard copy. Yeah. I, it, it'll be easier, I think. Just, we'll just take it up on Saturday. It's not a, it's not a problem. So. Okay, so the first order of business is uh, approval of minutes from October 1st and October 8th. Has everyone had a chance to take a look at them? Yep. Any, any changes or edits that you've already sent forward? No. I didn't see any, so I don't have any either. So by consensus, we will approve the minutes of October 1st and October 8th. Uh, at 7 o'clock, we will... Uh, suspend uh, the regular meeting and um, open the bids. We got four bids on the uh, police cruiser that um, we are trying to sell, so we will open them up um, at 7, as it was uh, publicly stated when we set it up to bid. Uh, first is uh, community input. Um, I don't see, okay, it's not on here as part of it, but I think we're, D, you're here for an. So are you here for the rec budget? Yeah. Why don't you come on up? We'll do that right now. Awesome. So you don't have to. Are all the other ones there? Are there other people coming? I'm sorry. Oh, um, yes. No. Dean's sitting in front of me. Celia's only doing one portion. No, no, they're both here. D 
Dee and Celia. There's no one else coming, right? No. Okay. Kelly They're both here then. Okay. I'm going to move the phone closer yeah. to them so you can hear Denise, okay? Hi, Denise. Yeah, hi. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. so we better. are um, presenting. Um, someone, do you need a copy of that? So, we're presenting on behalf of Falls and Recreation. And so, as it stands, um, we actually do separate our budgets um, as far as Camp Raleigh and Team Camper Concern. Okay. Uh, we do separate them. Um, we are asking for a combined number. So I gave you what was Camp Raleigh, and you have copies yeah. here for team if you want to hand those over. Or whatever copies you want is fine. Um, I'll hand over the copies. Okay. No, we stream that. So I will. I'll tell you the bottom line. Okay. Ask is sixty-two thousand and four dollars. Hold on. That's fine. Say that number exactly. Sixty-two thousand. Yep. Four dollars. Oh, four. Okay. So total. All right. All right. And that's. Uh, well, I'll let you do your presentation. So, are you going to do teen or are you going to do? Um, this matter. We can do younger something. kids first. Either way. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so younger kids. We, we are. Kids. So. Um, one of the good things about Sports Engine, uh, one one of the good things, um, although the jury's still out on, on it, um, <laughs> one of the good things is we're able to capture a lot of information this year, a lot of data that can be used to pick apart, figure out what the real total income was, and come up with a bunch of models and, and decide what was going to be the best for us. So this year, what we have is. Um, our total, we, we are anticipating our total expenses to be $46,884. Okay. But we also went and picked apart the tuition, registrations, before and after cares. Um, we, we know exactly what was for food and sales. We know exactly how much we got for programming and grants. Um, we kind of anticipate what we can count on for next year as well. And we are anticipating our income to be $46,690. Okay. Which is very, very, very close to revenue neutral. Okay. okay. And um, okay. As um, if for some reason you are not able to meet um, your revenue goals, um, you what will what will be the plan? Denise. Would you be able to help me answer that question? Well, if we don't have the revenue, we also will have. If we don't have the revenue, that means we have less children, which means we won't have some of the expense as well. So, some of the staff costs will go down. We won't have to have as much staff because we're not hiring the revenue. And um, we have, yeah, we won't have as many children, so it will be uh, less staff possibly. So, but, but but the rec committee is prepared to make uh, reductions or um, right. cut so back. Right. Pretty much year after year, we we expect that we watch the registrations that come in. Okay. We stay true to our staff to uh, camper ratio. Mm -hmm. um, we also watch very closely during the summer if we've got staff that we feel are there and don't need to be there. Right. Still staying within okay. the camp to staffer ratio. Okay. Um, right. So but that's why we're pretty good about the numbers. Just the uh, it, based on last year. Uh, what we received in registrations and, and staff and, and, um, and um, uh, kids there at camp, uh, we feel really good about these numbers. Okay. And we'll be able to become almost neutral. It will be, it will be very, very close to it if it's not. We, we have increased tuition, but it's it's not so much that we're pricing our sold out of the market and okay. we're not making it unaffordable for the residents and non-residents. And uh, the thing about non-residents, too, is that I want to point out is that um, from last year to the year before, we had a 34% growth of resident, uh, excuse me, out of towners, okay. which is which is good for us because that tells us that we're we've got a bigger outreach now um, outside of the town, and we think that could probably only grow a little bit more for us. And they're offsetting the cost of residents. Of course, yeah. Mm -hmm. And to help offset the camp 
Raleigh budget because these are all one big line item. Yep. Um, the team camp has some more flexibility. So if Camp Raleigh comes up short, the team camp may be able to absorb some of those costs, which they did this year. They did this year. We have ways of doing that, actually. We've talked about it and we're collaborating on. So one of, one of our biggest expenses are transportation buses. Mm -hmm. So we did last year because we collaborated on the bus transportation, which could be, could be upwards of $400 a bill, right. which for us is big money. Mm -hmm. So we can combine trips. Okay. and save on bus transportation. <coughs> but again, that's things that we monitor as the summer goes along. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. So, are you all set with yours? Uh, as long as they don't have any questions on Camp uh, Do we have last year's... Um, so it's a full budget front of the report, um, Caroline, do you know? Limited lines. You have um, registration set. Oh, for that last year's? So that was last awesome, year's, and you. the yellow is the actuals. Oh, okay. Perfect. Sound like that? For your record? Sure. Okay. So, right, just so, we're, so we're looking at about a $4,800 increase for Raleigh, and then where's Teen? Is Teen in here too, or no. is it just Raleigh? Yeah, That's just Raleigh. With offsetting revenue, though, so. Well, actually, well, no, no, no. Yeah. Let's see. That was the actual, sorry. Okay. The, the, the budgeted amount was 50000 50045 mm -hmm. and this year is 48 okay. Right? The actuals for the year. 46, for rather, sorry. Expenses were 44000 Yeah. No, but I'm just looking at what you're, what you're asking for this year. So you're asking for less than you did last year, so. Yes. Okay. And as we know, every year it gets a little better. I mean, it's, it's a learning experience for everybody. So. We tweaked some numbers and right. we were able to find some areas where we may have um, over, over priced some things like the vendors. Um, okay. Where we were able to find some areas that we could have right. Miles, do you have any questions on this part? Nope. Yeah, so. You want to hit the, I want to do the team part then, so yeah. Okay, so this year, 2018 year, we asked for 14790 for team camp. It, our registrations didn't come up to where we wanted them to be, so our actual numbers were um, six um, that we spent was six thousand five hundred and sixteen dollars there. So we're shooting for the middle next year. We're going for thirteen thousand five hundred and eighteen dollars. Um, so that's keeping the tuition flat. We are changing the registration fee um, to forty dollars. If you're just doing a camp Raleigh or camp teen camp registration, if you're doing both, last year the teen campers didn't have to pay registration um, because of the computer system oh, okay. added another transaction. Okay. So we're going to bump it this year so that it's half a dis it's a fifty percent discount. So you'll pay twenty dollars if you have kids in both. both. It'll be sixty dollars total, but twenty dollars will go towards teen camp <coughs> versus um, nothing from yeah. last year. So that was one of our biggest deficits there. Um, we are combining one of our lines at the bottom there of income, um, fundraising donations and t-shirt donations is all going to go into one line. Okay. So it, that will be 550. Okay. Um, this year we only had 10 to 15 kids sign up and we didn't feel there was a need for a second counselor so we only used the director. Um, that director is required to be 21 or older because right. the kids are up to 15 or right. 5 o'clock. And so we built in a budget for a second counselor if the program grows because having 15 kids proved to be difficult on occasion sure. when you're climbing a mountain or right, of course. going to a beach. So that um, money is there. And last year we gave the staff the day off on the 4th of July. This year, the 4th of July falls on a non-camp day. Okay. So we're switching that. And um, for the director, they have seven weeks at 24 hours, which is the camp hours. And then the last week includes their training. They would be salaried, so they would max out at um, that amount of money. As you can see, we did not use the total this year for that. 
So when it comes to staff training and orientation, we only counted the assistant counselor, okay. not the director. So if we don't hire a second person, that would be a savings there. Um, the payroll tax is based on both of them, so that could be potentially a savings if we only hire one. However, um, the bus, the um, supplies for passes, tickets and entries, those will probably go up um, proportional to the number of campers we get. Usually there's a set rate. However, if we can get 20 campers, we will get a group rate for many venues that we weren't able to get this year. Um, transportation is bus based on two buses per week, which means that we will bus with Camp Raleigh on Fridays to the swimming pool, and that would mean that um, Mondays and Wednesdays we could share with Camp Raleigh, so if Camp Raleigh is going on a field trip either one of those days, they could use our bus because we are not going to fill a bus. The smallest bus we can get is 75, and we anticipate maxing out at 20. And then um, the other cost we added in this year was contingency to help cover if we were to um, need more funding for the passes and stuff. Um, and we added in grant money on both sides of the equation. And then the, the other thing we have there is um, we cut the um, background checks in half, hoping that we would get a returning staff member. I think the other thing important note too that we neglected to mention is as far as um, learnings are concerned, one of the big learnings that came out of last year was salary. Mm -hmm. So we we are moving to salary to the direct and assistant director no longer on hourly on salary. So that was we learned that um, there was too much overtime involved, too many hours put in that we right. weren't aware of. Right. So right. we're controlling it this year by making a salary position. Okay. And Maybe it's too early, but have you had any conversations with um, previous staff to see if they want to come back? Uh, we haven't done that yet. Uh, what we do know is that the director may not come back. Okay. Um, just personal preference. She's her path in life. Okay. Her back. The team camp director has given input into things that would make the job easier, whether okay. she returns or not. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and that would take some of the burden off of the Camp Raleigh um, director. So we're restructuring it a little bit too. Last year we had one director and two assistant directors. This year we're going to have two directors, one for each camp. Right. And they'll be responsible for coordinating the field trips and the okay. all of that for their own camp. And then they would meet together when they're going together. Okay. Okay. Miles, you have any questions? <coughs> so the bottom line is these are these are nearly revenue or expense neutral. I mean, this one's seven dollars. This one's one hundred ninety-four. Mm -hmm. All right, and it's a reduction in um, the lines from last year. Right? So that's a positive too. I think every year you get better and better. I mean, we, and as um, someone who took advantage of this, um, I th you know, I think you do a great job with. Um, you know, all volunteer. I mean, I think you guys are doing a great job. So, um, I don't think I, nothing uh, jumps out at me at the moment. I mean, I like it. it's very detailed, so I appreciate that. We have every single thing uh, on here. Um, I'd be happy to provide any items for expense and income line by line if you need that too. Um, sorry. And we other? have, um, did you go with this to Caroline just so we have an electronic copy of it so we can merge it? I mean, make sure we do that too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can merge it in. We're going to be taking this up on Saturday. So. Um, the other thing I wanted to note about the team camp is this year it's not reported on here, but we did um, have one or two team campers do before and after care, and that's not included in this budget, so that would be an added bonus if we do have team campers do gotcha. before or after care. Yep. So we, oh that's okay, I'm looking at the wrong one. I just said that's not budgeted. Okay, so for this year for Camp Rowling, or I think we all, well, I'm not going to speak for Miles because he wasn't here, but for those of us that were here, um, um, uh, I think we really appreciate um, all the legwork that you did, especially you, Celia. Uh,
running into grants, coming in here week after week after week, and us uh, beating you up and telling you why you can't do this and why you should have done it this way and all that. So we appreciate it. It's a learning experience for all of us, so we appreciate it. I also need to recognize that you guys aren't getting paid for this, we're doing it to make sure that the kids in town have a, a program. So that's great. We appreciate that. So. And we do have one more grant funding program that will be coming this winter. Um, oh, okay. Probably at the you know, that's, you know, that's great. So, let's, it's not, do you want to talk about the other lines down here, actually? That might be good, actually. So, you're prepared to talk about those? I have a question about those that I would appreciate if you could just look when you do your budget workshop. Okay. There was, it's not included, I don't think, on this one, but in the 2018 budget, was $300 for senior programming. Yeah, it's a, it was, we talked about it on, on our budget. So, do you it's, have plans... We, it's in our in our working document that we're using. So. so is it still there? Can we use it to send out a survey? Does it have to be used by the end of the year, or can it carry over into the next year? We would prefer that you use it in this year, so we don't have to encumber the funds for next year. Okay. If so you I will get that out by the end of the year. And we were talking about whether or not we were going to continue that. It's why we're here, though. Uh, is that something you think we need the other three hundred again for next year, or is it something we could do? Put like a dollar in it to keep the line alive, sort of thing. If you don't have plans to do something, we don't want to. My plan had been to send out a survey uh -huh. to the whole community and ask what they would like to, to see. Right, right. Well, that makes gauge sense. interest in senior activities. Okay. Um, I you could, I suppose you could reduce it, um, by fifty percent or so, and then you could send out, um just one survey, or one letter. It's basically the cost of saying, you know what, this was the survey of results, this is what we're planning to do. All right, All right so we'll take that under advisement. So the other thing, though, is winter rec. Mm -hmm. Do we have plans to do anything with winter rec this year? Uh, unfortunately, I did you speak with Kelly today about that at all? Uh, so Kelly Anderson usually handles the winter rec. Okay. She's not here. Okay. I, actually, I honestly cannot speak to her. Um, we yeah. would like um, to keep that in the budget for basketball. Okay. We did basketball with the kids this year, and Kelly and I spoke briefly about starting an adult league um, today um, for broadband basketball at the elementary school. Okay. And we would have to pay staff to come in and unlock the door and be in the building at that time. I'm not sure if the amount would need to be there. That would be something Kelly could answer. Okay. How much she spent on refs and space rentals. And okay, stuff. so if you can have, we're going to work on this, like I said, on Saturday. So mm -hmm. I want to, I'd like to get rec taken care of on Saturday. So if you could have her send us an email that we could discuss on Saturday, I think that'd be really helpful. Miles, any questions? Um, I'm going to say Denise, any questions? I'm sorry, I keep forgetting you're on the phone. Denise, I'm sorry. Uh, we're together on that, so we're okay. Well, that's, that's why I figured, so. But, yeah. No, I'm good. Okay. Anything to add, Denise? No, I, I think they did a really good job this year, and they they really we really worked hard in getting the budget down to what we you know what it is, and uh, I think we're good. I think we're going to have a great program next year. Yeah, I, I can't say that. I appreciate that you've um, taken the time to really um, look at what you did this year, mm -hmm. uh, boil it down, and, and and to get the appropriate the requested appropriation below where you were last year. So I think that's very helpful. And again, it's a learning process for all of us. It's every year we get a little better, so mm -hmm. I do appreciate your time and all this. So if we don't have any other questions, I'll let you all, you know, we're welcome to stay and listen to everything else, but we're going to move on to someone else. That's okay with you all. Thank you, Thank you guys. Thank you. Have, a very, have a great night. Thank you. All righty. So uh, any other community input? I think we're in the department head. All righty. Is it all right if I let the food go first? Uh, I usually I don't know if say in alphabetical order, but you've got your whole budget, right? So we just have a couple quick questions for you. Okay. Unless you have like 100 POs, and no, it's just not fair to answer. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Well, we'll start with the good news. Uh, <laughs> Maybe I should have let you go first. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, we received the uh, reimbursement from New Hampshire Highway Safety for $1,200 for the distracted driving grant. Oh, okay. So we only have two pending right now. One is the four thousand dollars for the EOP update from mm -hmm. FEMA, and then we have the twenty or around the twenty-five thousand for the for repeater. Right. Um, the repeater is installed. We're just waiting for them to turn the switch on, 
and I anticipate that uh, by the end of this week we will have hand delivered the reimbursement request uh, to Concord. Okay, so hopefully we'll get that soon. All right. Uh, we had two classes, uh, two civilian firearms classes over the last couple of weeks. Uh -huh. uh, we had 12 attend the first one, six attend the second one, and uh, they all had a great time. They raved about it, so uh, we're planning to do again in the spring. Okay. So. Um, so you added another class because there was a waiting list? Is that yes. All right. And we, and we don't limit it to Rollins or residents, right? No, no. Okay. All right. So. Okay. Uh, last week, the uh, <coughs> seatbelt light indicator on the dash came on in Cruiser 74. We sent down the Poison 4 because Dover wouldn't look at it because it's, it's obviously an airbag issue. Oh. And uh, what we need to do is we need to replace the airbag module in that car. And while they're looking at this, well, you need front and rear sway bars as well. Which so, vehicle is this? I'm sorry. Pardon me? Which vehicle again? Uh, 74. Oh, that's the old one. That's 2016. <laughs> that's 2016, which has 134,000 miles on it. All right. Uh, so this repair is going to be a grand total of approximately $1,095. So I purchased a number 1472, made of the Poison Ford, for the amount of $1,095, and that will come out of our vehicle maintenance line item. <coughs> So I'll move purchase order 1472 and then $1,095 to Portsmouth Ford for vehicle maintenance on uh, Cruiser 74. Right. I'll second that. Okay. Um, Ooh, sway bar. All right. And there's obviously enough money on the there line to cover us. All right. However, I do anticipate that we still have a couple of bills. Uh, Invoices that we're still waiting for from Dover, so I, I do anticipate that that line I will go over a little bit. Okay. But there's money elsewhere. Oh, sorry, you can move around. Yes. Okay. Denise, do you have any questions or comments? No. Okay. No, I'm not bad. All right, so all those in favor of purchase order 1472, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. All right. Mail to AAA Police Supply, okay. and we would like to order three cases of the rifle ammunition for five hundred and seven dollars. And in that line item for ammo right now, we have five hundred and eighteen dollars. Uh, we actually went out last week and uh, did our night calls, and we've actually uh, used up our entire our entire stock of rifle okay. ammunition. All right. uh, I'll move purchase order one four seven one. In the amount of five hundred seven dollars to triple A police supply for uh, three cases of ammo. Right, second that. Any questions? All right. Sir, well, certainly heard you the other night. Um, all those in favor of first order fourteen seventy one say aye. 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 Opposed. Aye. Established policy in the town for paying our invoices. Is it every week, once a month, uh, as needed, uh, whenever we get a chance? And the, the reason I say that, several times this year, I've gotten calls from a vendor saying, hey, we haven't been paid in a while. And I know on at least a couple of occasions, we've probably incurred a, an additional expense as a result of that. Okay. And the most recent was, was last week, uh, generated connection call, and um, uh, it was still in the office across, across the hallway. So I spoke to Caroline about it, yep. and um, it, I mean she's just maxed to the wall when, when it comes to this. So, right. um, and you know, and I know every Monday night her list of, of activities and duties grows because right. she needs to research things. So I'm just wondering if, if there's something that the select board can do, or at least talk about it, to set up some established policy and procedure so that uh, at least those things are getting paid on, you know, on a regular basis. So we've incurred late charges? Uh, on a couple of occasions, yes. Yeah. Yeah. What would have been the terms when we were getting a late charge? Pardon me? What would have been the terms when we got the late charges? Do you know? Was it net 30? Or yeah, yeah, they're, they're usually 30 days, yes. It's usually 30 days? Yes. Okay. I will ask uh, Caroline, um, but we, um, we issue checks every week, so... Yeah. Come in every week and sign them. 
to the bills, rather. Okay, they authorize to pay them, so. And Miles has been, since he's taken yeah. over, he signs it every week, so we're not. Well, I'm we're, sure it's just are. a matter of that. I mean, I mean, her plate is full. Right. So obviously there are priorities, um, and which she has to deal with. And it was like I said, every Monday night she gets another t list of tasks. I, 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 think so. the, I think you're hitting right. the nail on the head. I think it's more of an issue of, um, of time. Correct. And, and that's yeah. what, I, not, no, I don't blame her. I, I blame the system that we have in place right now to take care of that. Correct. It's like you're giving me a segue, Bob, into uh, the line before, but we're, um, we're going to discuss that actually this evening. So I don't know if it's going to be the right solution, but we're, we're, we'll see, but we're going to try to address it tonight. So. Okay. All right, so we worked on your budget last Saturday, okay. and the board had a number of questions, and I just wrote them all down, and I sure. said we would ask you about it. Um, so the first one we had was contracted services. Yes. Um, you have, and I don't, know, but I don't have it in front of me, but it's because I didn't pull it out. So, your proposed budget was for, give me a second, I'm pulling it on there. 40. 40,000, yeah, okay, that's what I had written down if I want to make sure. And we're concerned that we only had, um, if I can find it now, up to a certain date, we only had, right, where am I missing contractual services? Page 5. Page 5. Probably right in front of us, why I can't see it. Okay, there it is. Okay, so it's even green, and I still, and all the rest of white, and some of still don't. So, so. Could be an interesting conversation. Okay, so, so far we've brought in um, about 11,600. Um, are we confident that we'll be able to get close to the 40,000 mark for next year? Or are we, are we? Well, again, that, that's a fluid number uh, because. You know, we don't know from year to year how many details we're going to have right. and how many uh, other agencies are going to invite us. Um, uh, remember, when we started at 30,000, we did very right. well the last right. couple of years, so that's why we bumped it up to 60. Right. Um, unfortunately, you know, this year there have been less details and because we've been so busy that we got to refuse a number of details as well. Okay. So, you know, I think between 30 and 40, again, is going to be the appropriate number, but I don't want to cut it short because if we don't have enough right. money there, then we have to... Some issues. I'd rather have too much in that line item. Right. Um, and and uh, in case, in fact, that we do you know, go almost to 40. Right. All right. So, uh, Denise, do you have any questions about that? Well, if, if, unfortunately, if we put too much in, then we're shutting our work, we're shutting our revenue on, on right. one side. So, right. can we put a lesser number than what he's proposing? Well, we can. I mean, we, we we can discuss that on on Saturday. I mean, I just wanted to get the the, what, the, the question the questions answered from from the chief. Miles, do you have any other questions on that one? Okay. Uh, the other thing, well, there's a couple of things. There's not, not many. There's only a few. Uh, other was uniforms. Um, we have uh, proposed forty-seven fifty, but we've only spent sixteen hundred. Of course, I re realize we've got. A, I now realize that we're going to have a new officer coming on. Maybe this year, right. so you may be spending a lot more. But new officer, plus we still have, uh, you know, we ordered the, the vest for Officer Lejoy, sure, which right. we're going to for us again. Okay. And um, we're getting ready to place an order for long sleeve shirts for everybody. Okay, so, so is, it, is it the case that we usually wait till the end of the year to order a lot of these things? That's one of the okay. items right. that we wait for to the end of the year. Okay, minutes. we're just trying to find, had a lot of unexpected increases, in other, not necessarily your budget, but in other places, so we're trying to find any place we may be able to find some... Room to cut. But Denise, or Miles, any questions? Yeah. Strong and dispatch. Um, actually, I don't think that was actually one of the questions. But okay. Well, um, go ahead. You know, I, I anticipate. Again, we didn't know the numbers were going to be, so I just rounded up to ten thousand dollars. I think it's going to be no more than ten percent. So I think it'd be safe to do an eight hundred dollar increase for that line item. Okay. So that will cut that in uh, by two, by one third anyway. We should have a chief's meeting uh, later this week. Okay. No more. Okay. So rather than an increase of 1164, so that'll increase help a little bit. Increase of 800. Perfect. Okay. So that saves a few dollars. Yes, we appreciate that. Uh, conference and dues line. We want to make sure that we're 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 putting enough in. Um, yeah, I mean that only went over by ten dollars, so I'm not too concerned. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, and oh, so this this must be a typo. Right. It, it's not 3160, it's 1360 as an actual. 
because we have uh, 3,160, so it was really only 1,350. That was the correct. So that's someone has uh, it's just a transposed a number. Okay, that's uh, yes. We're not concerned about ten dollars, I'm sure. So okay, <laughs> which I think if you're spending three thousand, you're only one thousand. We want to talk about that because we'd rather not, we'd rather either cut or or add it where we really need to. Okay, and office expenses. We also want to make sure that you have enough. Uh, where is that line? Office expenses and repairs. It looks like you spent uh, seventeen hundred so and, and thirty one dollars so far this year. The year's not over, and we only appropriated eighteen hundred. So, is there just something that happened this year that, or these ongoing costs that we? Well, in, in December we were talking to you about a fax machine, so so uh, maybe that, that that will take up the meter that. Okay. Possibly. All right. So there wasn't anything out of the ordinary. That no. Was that. Okay. No. All right. No. And I don't, did anyone else have any? I, I wrote all the questions down that you all had, and, we all, and I had so on Saturday. So you wrote uh, advertising that we were thinking, oh, yes, that's 300. Right. Yeah. We've increased that just on our own. Because you only had 150 in there, but Foster's costs close to 300 now to, to run an ad. So. And that's for one day, right? So when we do the... Well, that was, that's a two-day... You got two days for that much? Days, yeah. well, and you spent more than that then. So, okay. It's just, I don't know, the planning board, when, when people have to file, it was like 270 or 290, something crazy. Yeah, like that's that. one of those line items that we don't use very often. Right. So, you know, if, if it goes over a little bit because we have to hire somebody, uh, I mean, you take it somewhere else. You feel that you're going to have somewhere else. Okay. That's several hundred dollars. So. All right. All right. And uh, I think that's all we had. But, Denise, did you have any other questions? Okay, and so like I said, we're going to hopefully finalize this on uh, your portion on Saturday, or, or most of it, um, anyways, on Saturday, so. Yep. Uh, anything else, for, or do you have anything else for us, please? I don't think so. I don't think we have anything. To, oh, we do have something else on the agenda for you. A couple of things, and it's 7, it's seven o'clock now, so we have to open the bids in just a moment, but Oak Street MOU, did you have any? Um, I, I looked at that, and... Um, I think that because it's just written as a maintenance agreement, yeah. so I think it just take the police service out of it. Okay. I think what we'll do is we'll continue with our handshake agreement that we have with the city of Dover. At least the police response at this point. Dover has said that they're willing to redraft it at their expense with their attorney. Mm -hmm. So if you want to add it in now, this might be actually the well, time to do it. At, at the chief's meeting this week, let me talk to the new police chief okay. and see if he just wants to continue with the handshake agreement or if he wants to really formalize it. Okay. And... Uh, I'll talk to the to Mark to the fire chief about this afterwards too. But um, the only thing with budget questions we have. So um, we are going to if you don't have anything else for us, you might want to find out how much your old cruiser went for. We need to we said we were gonna open it at seven when we posted them, so we have to do that real quick. Sorry Mark, I know you I don't want to keep you all night, I know you got other things to do. Alright, we received four. Which I think, oh, really? I don't know if that's a record, but it's certainly a record since I've been here. For anything we've been trying to sell, so. Uh, we, at times we can't give things away. Um, I will open them all at once, and then look at them all at once. Um, second bid is for $787. I like this curve we're going. Oh, no. The next one is for $500. Um, and the second is for $557. I always wonder how people come up with these strategies. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like Price is Right. Uh, so it looks like the winning bid was $787, and that's to Mr. David Arkwell of Rollinsford. So, we'll let uh, Mr. Arkwell know he was the winning bidder, and uh, I think that's, I don't know, 
That might be the most we've gotten. We've realized anything since I've. I think that's except for the just end of scrap. So, anywho, so thank you, Caroline. Do you need to keep these for? If you would put them in the folder. Yes. All right. Thank you. We're all. Well, thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you. We'll reopen the meeting now. Chief, come on up. Sorry to keep you waiting.
But we have one more project which we'll get to here after this one's complete. Okay. So there is that one. So move purchase order 1441 in the amount of $2,927 to Frank Bernard Concrete Finishing for building maintenance at the fire station. Second that. So this is that's just a big proposal that I got right there. All right. Any other questions or comments? All right. All those in favor of purchase order fourteen forty one say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. 
Um, <coughs> all right, let's go. So the only real changes, I mean, there are, oh no, let's see, there are, propose, let's see if there's any, the real changes then come, as you said, under um, salaries. salaries for the, uh, for the, um, for the members, for the members that, show, that come, that show up, um, and uh, the radio line. Correct. Okay. Um, so, uh, the, now I want to ask this question. Clearly, there is a, there is a need, you, you, you feel there is a need for increased funding on the salary line. So, I mean, I guess maybe I already know the answer to this question, but I'm going to ask it. Go right ahead. We've talked about in the past different, um, different ways we can incentivize people that are otherwise busy with their jobs, with uh, family life, or any other reason they may have to respond to calls, especially in the middle of the day, where we, we don't live in the same type of society that we did years ago where people worked relatively close by, or maybe even in town, yeah. and they could respond and their, their employers would say, yeah. fine, yeah. run and go, yeah. you can you know, come back when you can. The that used to do that. Right. So those days seem to be passed. Um, do you feel that with this increase that you will have sufficient resources to entice members to no. show up? Okay. I kind of didn't think you did, but I mean, I know. I mean, you're, I know you're trying, so I'm not. Well, I'm not trying to be disparaging. I'm, try, I'm trying to do it in, in a uh, logical progression because basically, um, as I look down the road in the very near future, um, we're going to need to have people either on a per diem basis that are going to be available all uh, during the days. Basically, is the issue. Right. And are you that, or somebody's going to have to be put on as a permanent position? Mm -hmm. We are that close um, to the point where daytimes is. Is, uh, it's a it's a major struggle to make sure we have enough people that can respond. Right. And at the time, that's me, and I may be in lead or working on my uh, you know my contract and job wherever I'm at. I come back to just about everything, but depending on where I am. Time. And we all know time. Response time is the key to all of this. Uh, we still survive on the fact that we have some members that do have days off during the week. Right. We still have some members that uh, you know, work for local ambulance services, so they're available. Mm -hmm. So right now we're, we're still able to fill some of the gaps. Right. That is such a, a revolving door and changes right. weekly. Well, you told us last week, or the week before last, they were um, we're losing two members, so people that are buying houses in other estates and yep. people getting professional yep. positions. So yep. Exactly right. <coughs> so we understand that's happening too. So. And uh, we added a new member last week. We had a member... Uh, resident in the community come in. I think he's already certified that gave that one on application. So yeah. we're still bringing some people right. in at the, at the lower end, but uh, some of these and then we have to invest and train them and get them ready to go. So that revolving door is always there. But my, I, my, my plan with this here is, you know, start with that amount of money now. It's just going to be almost an annual thing for a while because if we do get to the point where you need to set up some sort of per diem program or put somebody on for 30 hours a week so they're here during the daytime, that the money is already here and we're not going to be scrambling to find it or have it all of a sudden one large increase. How would, how would um, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves because you, I know you're not asking for it in here, we're just trying to think ahead. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> how would a 30-hour per week person actually work? Because how, how many folks do you have to have on, on a truck before they, it goes out the door? By NFPA standard, the national standard, you should have three people on an engine. Bare minimum. Bare minimum. That is the bare minimum. You should have three people. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of communities, and not only us, do we meet that on most of our calls? I'll give you 70%. We can roll out with three. There's been times when I've been the only one that's going to Initially. Mm -hmm. There may be some other people that and come. people will meet you at the scene at work. Yep. Yeah. Or they'll go to the station and pick up another piece of equipment, but at least... At least somebody that represents the community, the fire department, is right. there and can initially make the, the decisions that need to be done. So um, we're working towards improving that, but basically it's coming to the point where uh, most every community around here has somebody on that covers daytime stuff. There's only two that don't anymore. Us and Elliot. <coughs> and I don't know if you started out going paper the other day. Elliot's very close to going and putting on some sort of people during the day. Because they have an issue where they have people that. Uh, work for the highway department as we did. They used to respond, well, the highway department, they always get a different contract, and they're going to eliminate their ability to do that. So they would be
be the ones that would be the daytime responder right. along with their chief, so they would meet the three person requirement. So, okay. I mean, it, everybody's there. And that's why mutual aid in this area is just so important. Yeah. Because you have to have it, because there's no other way you can survive. Nobody okay. can afford to build that the, the fire service you know, requires to be able to meet anything that they mandate you do. Right. And we do the best we can. Basically, it's just a risk, a risk assessment thing. What is the amount, the level of risk that the community is willing to, to accept? Um, I mean, I don't, I've talked to an awful lot of people. They, still, they think that wherever they had moved from when they come to our community, they think is a full time fire department. So, let's have a little conversation. You know, and it's just them being able to you know, be educated on what they expect and what we actually provide. All right. Does, this, does the increase represent an increase in salary or an increase in? Number of members, or, or both. Basically, it's just salary. Does it do anything to do with the amount of members we have? What happens with that salary line, Miles? Is uh, <coughs> when we have calls, the members that come to the station and respond to that call, we have a sign-up logging sheet, mm -hmm. and it, it's your name, and you sign in, and, and uh, from the start of the call to the end of the call, and on an hourly basis, you earn points, one point per hour, depending on your rank and whatnot, and that's how that money is. is doled out more or less is, you know, the guys that are very reactive, and we use that as an incentive. You come, you're going to get paid. If you're not, you're obviously you're not going to get paid. Yep. So, and I've had the struggles before, and I keep saying, you know, our minimum wage in this state is what, seven and a quarter, seven and fifty or something? We wouldn't even need that. Yeah, I'm and, sure. And it's a constant battle for us to have our people, because every other fire department around here, if they find somebody that's interested, everybody's after them. And they're going to grab them because most of them are hard <coughs> left. Fourteen dollar an hour minimum. And we don't even come close to that. So other than that, people that are just dedicated, whether they're uh, you know, residents or whatever. Some of the influence that I have on some things that help to get them where they want to go has always been uh, a card I've been able to play. Yep. We're still using that, but it's it's not always going to be there. So I'm kind of preparing for down the road. Well, I'm, I'm actually have been talking to some of the chiefs in the area. And per diem is the big thing that a lot of these apartments initially right. go to when they want to put some people on. And I'm getting some information on how they administer some of those in local communities. And right. Kind of take some of that information in. It would be good to know, do they have a, a bare place. minimum of, do they have like, do they have three people on per diem that day? Two, or is it just well, one? Most of these communities have a, a, a staff position, would be a chief, it's called a chief's position. A lot of these are getting anywhere from 20 to 30 hours a week. And that's, you know, a regular salary Fire chief, right? When you use that. He's one of those personnel. And then you have two more people during the day. Are they on duty? They don't have to be on duty. What a lot of them uh, locally are doing is they have to be able to get to the fire station within eight minutes. Okay. There's no calls that day. They're on the per diem ranks. You earn 50 bucks a day just for being available. Right. Whether you go or not. Right. So those, that's a, a baseline mm -hmm. on how some of these are, are constructed. Mm -hmm. How it works for us. We could just right. do what, what we <coughs> test for our model. Right. But your guaranteed coverage, your guaranteed those people that coverage. are on per diem are, need to show up within that a lot of time. Okay. And that's, that's the thing is now you can start to meet standard on what you should right. have for your response times. Right. Because, you know, during the day, every time when I'm wearing, I get a call. It's the first thing in the cup. All right. What day is it? Who's far away around? How long is it going to take us to get on the road? All right. Well, how... This line, that the increase you're asking for, to bring it up to 51,000. 51, how close are we now to the state minimum wage? If we can get to this point, we'll probably be over. We'll be uh, slightly over the, yeah. the state minimum wage? Yeah. Because uh, basically when we do our, the guys get their pay quarterly. Right. So the last one of the year will be, it ends in November, and make it in December. So it works that they get points per hour per per call. call. So on a three month yeah. basis we may we may do fifty calls. Fifty calls. And yeah. how many of those you were there, how long the duration was, how many points you earned, yeah. all those points from everybody go in a big bucket. And basically at forty one it's ten grand per quarter. It gets divided up. It gets divided up. Exactly. That's how we do it. Firefighters are, you know, at one point and then officers get a little bit more okay. as they go up. Go ahead, Denise. It's based on your experience. Mark, do you, tra you pay them by the hour for their training as well? Some like on Monday night? Yep, some trainings okay. they, they do get paid for. 
Um, some trainings and some meeting nights, they also earn points for that also. Right. Okay. Yeah. Again, so we can get some people to come in and make sure that they what required hours of training. Right. So we have to do some of that also. Right. But again, to answer your question, Mike, if this budget goes and we have that money, I think we will definitely go over the minimum. We'll probably be pushing eight bucks an hour by then, I would think. Okay. Because when Kevin does payrolls and we do it on the, on a quarterly basis, he always gives me the number on about uh, where we were on uh, what each point was worth. So the point would be at seven fifty. And if you came in for a call and you paid three four hours, boom, 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 add up thirty bucks. And things like that. What are the qualifications, Mark, to, to serve on the Rollins for fire department? Qualifications. What, 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 are we, what do we require of folks to do? You have to be a level one certified firefighter. And what does it take to become a level one certified firefighter? You have to go to school, and it's roughly 260 hours of training that you do. And so that's all the bare minimum basic uh, informational stuff that you're going to need to know to become a firefighter. From, from dragging hose to using your impact and all your protective gear is to traffic accidents to extrication. You name it, all that stuff is there. The most, uh, it's, it's about a four month class, and it not only includes classroom, it's, it's a very large uh, involvement with practical skills. And how many um, how many calls this past year would you say, approximately? I know the year is not over yet, and you, you right do a tally at the end of the year for yeah, us. But right now we're, we're at 147 calls. How many structure fires? Ones that we've actually had actually built a fire so far this year, we've had four. Major accidents on the four, do you think? How many? Half a dozen. Not all on Route 4, it seems like they've well, a lot of <laughs> That is the, the, the <laughs> busiest road in, in our it town. It's it also the highest speed limit. Yeah. Um, I, I drive to Concord every day to go to work. And you know, at the Epsom McDonald's, at the traffic circle, mm. they're paying uh, starting people $10 an hour to, to work at McDonald's. So. And not to say there's anything wrong with working at McDonald's, but I would say that the men and women of the Rollinshire Fire Department that are running into burning buildings, standing out on Route 4 hoping not to get run over themselves, probably deserve at least eight bucks an hour. So. Uh, I would certainly agree with that. I can't disagree with that. Okay, do you want to talk about radios? Or unless, Denise, do you want to talk about salaries some more? I don't mean to cut it off if, if you want to ask questions. Well, uh, okay. I'm good for it. Uh, radios, let's talk about radios. So. We're talking about New Line, which makes sense to me because we've got that contract. We need to pay off the um, the, the three year agreement with the city of right. pay off the repeat. And so so Denise, were you here when we did this? No. Okay, so and I know Miles wasn't. So quickly, um, on um, Garrison no, Garrison. Yeah, Garrison Hill. No. Uh, the tower we thought we were going to be able to retain certain services there. The city of Dover led us to believe that we were going to stay. Um, well, it all stemmed from that. Let me get to it. Wait, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, analog. To stay analog instead of going digital. Dover's going to go digital eventually, but not all the way. We're going to retain certain things. And all of a sudden, Mark gets this oh, by the way, we're going all digital. Rollins, if you're kind of on your own, are you going to give us a lot of money? So I'm just doing a quick recap for you so you guys know. And you've got the MOU in this packet so you understand. You can read through it. Mark worked with with the chief, or maybe the former chief at this point. I don't know if he... It was with Chief Collins. Okay. So, and and um, worked out a deal where they would keep analog equipment for Rollinsburg. I think it does benefit Dover, really, too. But, it does. Um, on Garrison Hill, which actually increases his radio... Um, Accessibility, credibility, which is good for us, in that but it was going to be a substantial amount of money. Uh, Mark, Chief Rutherford was able to work out a deal with Chief Paul Russo where it was in the payment plan, which really was advantageous for Rollins. Right? Um, yeah, the it's also the limit they wanted was forty thousand dollars. Yeah, so and we actually got to eighteen, and the actual working price is down to thirteen. Right. So we went from forty <laughs> to eighteen. Now to he's worked out to. Thirteen grand. So we need to pay the city of Dover um, three installments of uh, forty-five hundred dollars, okay. which I think is kudos to, to the fire chief for, for making this happen. Um, so that makes all the sense in the world to me. So that's that's a 
portion of it. So how many radios? Okay, I'm getting to it. Mm -hmm. I'm leading up to a question, I promise. How many radios does that eleven thousand uh, dollars represent? Three. Three. Okay, yeah, no, they're not cheap, so. No. Um, nothing in the wire service. So $4,000 for the base model, for one thing's up above it, they go from five, up to five to six thousand dollars for one handheld radio. So we'll use a mix of analog and digital until. Basically, we have no digital. Okay. We don't. Just a synopsis, a little bit more of that, is they went all digital. Mm -hmm. They were going to have to leave the analog component because that was up on the hill and that was used to set off their station tones in the city hill. Um, and they kept that for a while, but now they have switched over so that everything is digital. But I did find out a tidbit the other day that they are still using. <laughs> and we can reverse some of that payment we have to give. They're still using our analog system to set off their pages that the individual firefighters go. And there's no way that they can upgrade to digital. So that it's always going to have to be in place. Mm. But I found out this out kind of going around left in through dispatch, because I don't think they want to get that information out as freely as I right. thought to find it. So it's not like it, they're totally got rid of that. It's always going to have to be in their component. So, so potentially you may be able to. Yeah, well, I'll get some mileage. Renegotiate. Now maybe not renegotiate this contract, but get other. Get something. Something else from the city. On from that. That. Oh yeah, I appreciate that too. So three radios this year, um, and we haven't done the CIP yet. So if this is part of the Denise, if this is part of the CIP for a Saturday, just cut me off now. Three radios on the CIP. Okay. Yeah. So that yeah, okay. Yeah, then I'm not going to ask the next question. So. Did you get my response to your email, Denise? We had, that, we had that discussion about okay. kind of I'll save it then. I'll save it. But just so Miles knows, I know Denise knows this because she's intimately involved with the, with the fire service in town, um, has been for a number of years. How do we get the bulk of our radios? They were given to us from the state. When? 15, 18 years ago. And after 9 11? The wasn't state it? got a great okay. upgraded yeah. everything in the state. The old so, ones that yeah. they didn't need were disseminated to fire departments and ambulances yeah. or whatever, and that's where we got ours. And the reason why this program is bumped up to the forefront is the radios that we have now are unrepairable yeah. when they fail. Okay. So the radio service companies won't <coughs> touch them anymore. So Mark and Mike and Harry have been keeping these these machines going for a good number of years. So if they've, they've, they've reached their, their shelf life. Yeah. We, we need sure, to so start going in start replacing these things so and these are these are the um are these the radios that they carry at, at, at accident scenes and going to fires and all these things so, yep. so you kind of want them to work so you have to have more communications is the number one right. priority when it comes to what we do yeah. and uh there's a lot of again local fire departments have done the same thing done a lot of their upgrades when dover did their big upgrade they got all new portable Summers are at the start of the same way, so we're going to get the same brand, the same style that they have. So we're, we're all yeah. compatible. That's pretty much also, uh, I hate to use the word mandated, but it is for the Seacoast Chiefs because they kind of are an organization that all the local fire departments belong to, and they kind of oversee some of the stuff. And they'll mandate things, but they might be helping with the funding and all, but they tell you this is the level of what they want you to be. And basically, it's a spin off from what an FBA wants to see done. So we're just, it's just a trickle down thing that's getting to us. But, if this comes into place and we can do this, we'll be ahead of the curve. But in, in the, um, I mean, the advantage, though, of getting compatible radios is that you can talk to one or another when you're on a mutual aid call. And yeah. Okay. So yeah. I'm assuming three is not really no. enough, right? <laughs> that, no. That's a that, Saturday that, question. That, that's, that's, off the line, that's off the line item for me yeah. here. If that goes through, we do get that. But like we were talking, Mike had made reference to the CIP. Mm -hmm. um, that was 40000 in the CIP and that that was earmarked for another piece of equipment. And after all this came to fruition, I think it would be more prudent for us to change that, just reroute that money towards new upgrades of the radio equipment. And then the CIP is a fluid document, so we can reprioritize. And it's based off of Denise's committee will make a recommendation to us, well, that's going to happen Saturday, yeah. um, based on the input from the department head. So if the fire chief says the... Um, we need radios more than we need, I don't know, whatever. Um, we take that, we take that, 
And we, we you know, we we take those, we, and we have in the past, too, and other boards have, take those recommendations seriously because these are the people. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, this all happens and everything falls into place. If this comes into place in, in the CIP, we can end up with getting about 15 new radios. And how many do we need total? I know that's a, I know it's a Saturday question, but you're here, so we need 25. 25. So, and that's for all, all the positions. everything went through. Yeah, and, and what my goal is to at least get the two engines equipped with the total right. radio. So, so when guys come in, because ideally we like to see four or five guys on each truck, and normally right. we'll get that, but it just takes a while to get there. So I want um, all new equipment on those pieces. Yeah, are there grant opportunities to, for we, offsetting? Yeah, yeah, we've been working on that for okay. the last couple three years. Right. And to the point where at first we hardly even got through the door, but as of last year we we've done some uh, uh, sought out some grant writing help, Good. and we actually made it through the door into the room and on the table. Nice. This okay. last year, so we're okay. hoping that I mean, even even if we get this and we start coming through, there's still other upgrades that we do right. land and grant because we have to upgrade the, the uh, mobile station, right, at, at our dispatch monitor and within the station. Right. So there's other things other than the portables that we could use grant money for. Okay. So. Uh, we're, we're still working right. on trying to get that, and if we didn't, we can find other means to uh, use it. If I could use it to pay off the, you know, the other three payments of the equipment we're looking to have to purchase, you know, whatever. If we land one, we can find ways to utilize it. Okay. So the only other place that I see any, um, any, uh, let's see, real difference in here. I don't know. I'm not sure I'm not missing anything. Um, supplies. I mean, it's it's two hundred dollars, so it's not clearly you, you, you feel that you need you need additional resources there, and that's a small enough thing. So, so there's no other sub, there's no substantial increases. Nothing. They're all nothing. Because actually, even tonight when I came in, South Carolina, she gave me my updated spending estimate today. Okay. And I have a copy of that right now. She, we had a discussion the other day because. I don't know, I'm not the only department that does it because I heard Chief Dushan talking about it all. So there's always some things you kind of wait more towards the end of the year in yep. case something comes up. We did a few years ago when you needed extra money for paving. Yep. You, you got some from each of the department. So as of, as of this morning, I spent 58% of the half rate budget this year. Right. Okay, so um, and typically the end of the year is when we finish out all the vehicle maintenance stuff. We're going to do emergency testing with fire trucks. Um, and buy the rest of the personnel, the equipment, the clothing, the personal care, the clothing, and whatnot. So, Caroline's discussion was like, I was waiting until the end. The only surprises for one. <laughs> and two, uh, a lot of times it's a lot easier for me to manage and see where I'm at. So, we're at 50, 60% of the budget right now, and with a quarter of the year left. So, and typically, since I've been in this chair now for going on seven years, uh, it's always been a little bit left because of some areas that I just can't spend it on. Right. Because I can't. All right, so are there any other questions for the fire yeah. chief? Denise, you got any questions or comments? Okay. All right, so we're going to um, work on this on Saturday, Mark. So if there's anything that does pop up, I can't imagine um, other than radios and salary, because everything else is the same. Um, we'll let you know. Okay. So we appreciate, appreciate your time. Yeah. yeah. All right. No problem. Yeah, is the clerk here? She is. She wants to see if we go to the end. I told her I would oh, grab her when we're I'm supposed done. To add, oh, we're supposed to ask you one other thing, Mark. I'm sorry. No, oh, all right. Right. So, you, you come back to get me. Sorry. Um, the MOU for um, for Oak Street. Um, uh, so the memorandum of understanding or agreement with the city of Dover uh, as to uh, who paves, who plows, certain things, potholes. There's police. Um, and is there fire? If there's an incident on Oak Street, an accident or something that you all do you just respond to anything on Oak Street, even if it's on the Basically, other side? Basically, the, the, the agreement that I've always had over there and is through the dispatch is um, it's the middle of the road. Okay. Well, that's that is that's the that's the, the, the line town and city line. So okay. Line. You know, if you're headed up Oak Street headed towards Mr. Mike's, everything to the right. I don't that's the wrong side. Everything okay. to the left is our side. Okay. If there's right. a traffic accident in some place, a lot of times we'll both be there. Yeah. Um, the Portland Street side of it, that whole intersection is doors. Okay. okay. The actual line is, is a little bit down the where over, the yep. bank is. Yep. On the lower end at Broadway, that's actually ours. Mm -hmm. So the way the line runs, it's not it's it's nice and straight.
straight as you want it to be. Which is actually the, yeah, yeah. the building on the other side of uh, on the Oak and Broadway side, 72 Oak Street, is actually our building. Hmm. That's in this town. It's an apartment building. Like oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Six unit At the end there. Oh, yes, I know, yeah. That's, that's yeah. ours, too. Yes. So we had a fire had not fires, too long ago. Yeah, yeah. A couple of fires in that building. So yeah. That been, so. But, you know, we all end up there anyway. So. Okay. So well, is that, do you want that. something in writing as part of this MOU or MAU or what is it? MOA? Uh, what does what PD do? Well, at the moment they have a handshake agreement with the city of Dover, that, yeah. which I think we'll talk about some more, but we want to get away from those things. Um, so if you want it in writing, the city of Dover has staff attorneys that we don't have. I'm sure you're aware oh, of yes. And they have very kindly and graciously agreed to handle the drafting of any changes that need to be done on all on them, so we don't incur all the legal costs. Right. Oh, if exactly. you want as part of it, we can I think it makes put it in. All the so. sense in the world to have those things done so it's documented and right yep. rather than, you know, like you said, a handshake agreement. Sometimes those just don't hold up when you really need to. They don't. Chief Rose, I know him rather well. I'm sure he would be more than welcome. Do you want to reach out to him and see if he wants it part of the as well? And then maybe send something to Carolina and we can have Mr. Blankensoff uh, of the City yeah. of Dover Incorporated. Yeah. Awesome. That's okay. That would be the way to go. And just one other update for you. If anybody's going by the firehouse tomorrow, uh, George just contacted me. He's going to take up the part of the ramp in front of the firehouse. Oh, okay. Yeah. Where the new bay is and the new fire trucks yeah. coming out. He's going to regrade it. Hopefully by Wednesday we'll have a whole new ramp there. Okay. So that's going to be happening if you go by and you wonder what it was. That's just us doing what we're doing. He had doing. mentioned a few weeks ago that he was weather dependent. Well, yeah. And, and, you know, his scheduling it was well, coming. Well, this afternoon it says there's not enough to be in rain for the rest of the week. It's his goal to get that taken care of. All right. Two days. Yeah, that's what I said. All right. <laughs> Easy for now. He's got a striping machine so he can stripe it for us so everything's going to be. We're going to talk about his other yeah. piece of equipment he got for free, too. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. His, his PC picked up. Why not? You know, if you can do that, put it in service, why not? That's what I said. Yeah. But we well, can't wait to accept the agreement. So, anyways, that's it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. So, I'm sorry. Did, um, um, she wants to go. She would prefer to wait until after the welfare. Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah. whatever. Yeah, just want to make her wait. So, we have a welfare case. So, Miles. I I move that we go into non public session for welfare petition. Okay, um, there's a roll call on that. Is it seconded? I'll second it. Um, uh, we'll do a roll call. Uh, Miles? Yes. Denise? Yes. Mike? Yes. Okay, we're a non public session to deal with welfare petition. But if, um, but if you need to hop off, um, just let me know. Be, just let me know with, we'll sign off. If you're still okay, if you're still okay, I think we're, we're plugging along. Are we all back in? Tell me we came back at uh, 7.53. Can you tell me why? Oh, okay. Put the camera on. Yep, cameras are on. Yes, all it's right. back on. Thank all right, you. so the text, uh, the town clerk is coming in momentarily, and we will, um... What? Hello. Uh, How are you? Hear her, um... Oh, Denise is on phone. She's under the weather today, okay. so she's, uh, she's joining us via phone. Hello. So, um, all right, I have it here somewhere. Did you already submit? I did. I just needed to start with this. Um, it, it just says that I posted uh, the times and location of the up and coming election. Oh, so the warrant for the uh, state election. You got it. Okay. All right, so today is the 15th of October. It's 15th day of October in the year of our Lord, 2018. All right. And we will sign this. And it says, Anissa, you know, to the inhabitants in town, to the inhabitants of the town of Rollinster in the county of Stratford, New Hampshire, you are hereby notified to meet the American Legion on Tuesday, the 6th day of November, 2018, polls will be open between the hours of 7 and 7 to act upon the following subject to bring in your votes for governor, United States representative, executive counselor, 
state senators, state representatives, and county officers, and to bring in your votes for constitutional amendment questions. And then we're just going to sign it, saying that yes, this is get the select board uh, issues the warrant to oh, call out the voters. So, okay. Just so you know what, what we're like. What am I listening to? <laughs> That's what you're listening. get away with not having to sign it this year. <laughs> you are out, but next year. Oh, we've got twice to sign. And then it says, we hereby certify that we gave notice to the inhabitants within named to meet at a time and place for the purpose uh, within mentioned by posting an attested copy of the above warrant at the place of meeting in the office of the town or city clerk or city hall on the 15th day of October 2018, we signed it again. Because the first time we signed it wasn't enough on the same piece of paper. All right. Miles, you can sign there and we'll... I have ordered signs to put out front here, too, that will say um, voting is being held at the American Legion. Yep. So that oh, if people do pull up the bottom block. Sorry. If people do pull up, they'll see that. Good. All right, so we have, did you already submitted your, I did. your budget and folks? I got a little revision. There were, oh, you have, oh, you have a new one, Warson? No, oh. just one. Okay. Area. Let me just find where you sent it. I know it's here, because I just looked at it when I was looking for the fire chief. It's probably at the bottom. I can make a copy of mine. Oh, I know. Maybe I'm sorry. It wasn't, uh, yeah, on the bottom. All right. You have your mind? Yep. All right. So, the, you, you want to go with your revision first and then folks can... Oh, no, we can, can start the top work our way down or how we've been doing it. Okay. Um, yeah, the revision, it's a wish list, but I'll, I'll talk about it. All right. It. So, um, it was a tax collector. I wrote down all the, we have, we've been having workshops on the budget, mm -hmm. and there was questions, and I wrote it down, so she could make. I'm going to write it directly on the piece of paper on the budget, so I might have. I was trying to keep everyone's questions together, so. We've gotten a new printout since we we have, yeah. So, all right. So, if folks remember what their questions were, I don't. You, you feel free to ask them because we can go through a line by line if we want. The first was, um, well, I'm just go through the lines. Unless Denise, do you remember a question you wanted to ask? The other thing I wanted to do is to have a little more information about the pros and the cons of the new software that she wants to get, and is it mandatory so that we go forward with that? Oh, it was the software, right? That was the, um, yeah. yeah, 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 thank you, Jog, my memory. So okay. we can, the programming. can start with that, Denise, it? and it's actually um, larger yeah, than... Hold on, hold on, can she come a little closer? I, I will move really the phone closer to her, yes. Hi, Denise. That's better, thank you. You're welcome. It's actually uh, a little higher than I first anticipated. Um, many of the clerks throughout the state of New Hampshire have gone with Avatar because they have just come out with a... Um, a new program that it supersedes the one that I had projected going into. We currently have what's called um, Interware, and we have our dog program with them. And all of these programs are kind of a la carte. Like once you get in, then you can build, but it costs more money as you build to add the autos, um, you know, the dogs, the boats. You want to add them all to a program. So, I originally had given the company that we're currently working with an offer to give me a price, which was roughly around 3500 If we were to switch over to Avatar, which as you know we use for tax collection and assessing, their program is 10000 But what it allows us to do, well there's a multitude of things it allows us to do, but most importantly, we will end up with a screen that we could collect a dog, a car, a boat, and I can even do vital statistics all on one um, system.
currently, Andrea and I run about seven systems. She's got one for property tax. She's got one for residence tax. I have one for dogs. We have one for boats, autos, and death, birth, and marriages. And they're currently all separate, involving more deposits, separations. So the pro to this program is to be able to cash people out um, with possibly one check. We're currently doing two checks for motor vehicle, but this program would allow us to collect one. Um, I mean, I have it all in print. It's probably going to be Greek to you guys as far as um, what it allows us to do, but it, it's more user-friendly and it gives the towns more control over the software. We're currently connected to the DMV software, and we don't have any control over any changes. Um, this would enable me to be able to print my own notices in which I could add additional information, whether somebody was on vacation or a day that we need to close. Um, it's just, it gives us more um, <coughs> freedom to work throughout the system. But more importantly, I mean, for a customer, it's much easier. This is a stepping stone. We would be able to start with this program, and then they can set us up with debit and credit. And it would also allow, allow online registration, which people could go online and put their information in, um, pay the additional fee, and uh, we process it. So it's, it's an enormous um, step. And I, and I realize that it's a lot of money for the town, but at some point, the state will force us off their program. Little by little they are, you know how they had us a couple years ago put our, new, our own VPN in, and then now they've stopped supplying us with the equipment. So little by little they're pushing communities towards this, and the difference is like day and night between the program I'm on and this one. And I realize it's a, a huge jump. It's again my wish list. I think for residents and um, Myself, it would be a, a, a huge bonus. Are, are there fees associated with the programs we're using now? Yes. Besides the dog one? I mean, I know that one. But yes. Okay. The dog one, so that would obviously go away because we would be starting new. And they could transfer right. our dogs over to this program. Okay. Um, the state is considered a browser town, so we don't pay for the system. We okay. do pay for the notices that they generate. Okay. Um, but I could generate my own. Where, how, and how do we um, how do we pay for those services now? Where is that in the budget? Um, it must be under my. I don't know. Okay. Vital I record and payments for the states. That must. No, that's one. And that's another area that. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. I am doing deaths, births, and marriages probably four times greater than I've done in the past. I did seven. Um, birth certificates last week. I didn't do seven in a year last year. Hmm. Now that um, the new driver's license sets out, mm -hmm. everybody has to have an original birth certificate, so there's been an uptick in that. And then in marriages, we've had a big uptick because um, for those people that were going to be thrown out of the country, there were a lot of marriages. And then we also um, are doing a lot for insurance purposes. Hmm. So we have had a big uptick in that. But this would just allow me, I mean, I, I know it's frustrating when people come in, they have to write two checks for motor vehicle, then they have to write one for their residence tax, and then if they do their dog, they got to write a check. And if they do a boat, everything is separated, but as you can see with this program, it's, um, I don't know if I showed you, but it's a mass screen. Yeah, you have that here. So, so that is that, is it, is it that they have to write separate checks based on the program you're using, or because they're separate accounts to the state and the town? Well, the state and the town are definitely separate accounts. Right. But the others are just set up separate accounts, and that's how the auditor has us doing those. But this okay. would print a report at the end of the day, allocating where all the monies go. We can just do the deposit and split it accordingly. So currently, because we don't have a, a program that will create the report, we have to have separate. We have to have a separate check for. Yeah. For for each thing to to mm -hmm. for the auditor, and it, it makes more work obviously for cashing out and more trips to the bank. 
and, um, and, and more time for the auditor. So, I mean, this is, this is the, the direction that most towns and cities are going in because it's, it's what people want, the convenience. Um, as far as credit cards, um, I don't know how much use we'll get out of that because it is 3%. So if you're doing a registration for a car, like our average car is $300, you know, it's another $9. Mm -hmm. So, and I can't see a lot of people using that, but for the people who do want it, um, or uh, when you do it online, it charges you a fee too. So it's 10000 and then is there an annual maintenance agreement? You know, he just faxed this over to me today, and they're coming in November to do a demonstration. Okay. Um, so I would have to find out what that is. Can you um, maybe make a, um, can you scan that yep. for us? Yep. And email it over to us so we can take a look at it. Yep. So we have and it all, and we'll back then too. So them. Um, to try to get the price down because we, we do have their right. other software. Yep. Um, this is just the first initial cost that came over. All right. So we can take a look at and see if there's other yeah. information so, in there. Anyways, so I realize it's high. Like I said, it's my wish list, but I think it's up to the board whether they feel the town's ready for this. Yep. I mean, it's a big change. Um, so you wouldn't need the 3548? No, no, it's but, looking more like 10. But I mean, it's yeah. not an additional. So no, if, like, if ten gets turned down, mm -hmm. then, then you do need thirty-five forty-eight. No. Oh, no. Okay. The ten would cover um, my existing dog program. They, they're going to move that over and um, set us up with a new program. So in that in the packet that you're going to email over to mm -hmm. us, does that have? Um, um, actually, you don't have to scan it, but you already printed it. It was an email. It was poor. Sorry. No, what no. I was thinking, but um, it has like it, maintenance fee agreement and all, the, all that information's in there. Like not ongoing. all of it. I, I just scanned it quickly, but it, and it's going to seem kind of Greek to you, and so I can answer any questions. But the state program, as you know, any state program is really behind the times, and um, it would just be helpful, I think, to the residents in the town. Are there any other questions on this piece? I, I, now I remember actually I did have a question about programming of ballots, but I don't want to move off the people who still have more questions. I think I'd like to read through the information on that before okay. I... Are you okay with that, Denise? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. So, uh, program and printing of ballots. Um, the, the, the amount that you've requested of 3500 is that based on an actual quote from the people? LHS. LHS. Yeah. What I did is I did two things. I got a price from them, and then I, I worked closely with the town of um, uh, Newfields, because mm -hmm. they're the same size, and they're SB2. Okay. Some That's towns, my next question. So. Some towns, as of Northampton, had eight ballots. Right, eight pages to their ballot. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. So, so that's why I want to make sure we're... I went with new fields and with the school, which they have one as well, it's, we're looking at three ballots. And that's just, we can only surmise because... Three pages gets, for, yeah. so between school and town. Yeah, two for town and one, one for, for school. Yeah. And, um, I mean, it's going to cost us more. It's going to be more in programming. It's going to be more in ballots. And uh, I anticipate eight to, I'd say six to eight minutes for everybody in a booth. And that's for the state election, that's not for you. No, that's a town. Oh, that's for town. SB2. Okay. Uh, yes, right. We only have a town election next year. I was going to say because the state pays for the yeah, state Yeah, no, election. we had three this year. But. So, um, yeah, it's going to be quite an increase. Okay. And I, I'm, they, also, I'm sorry, are they um, double-sided? They are. Yep. So you're saying three double-sided pages per... Yeah, election. Well, per town election. Of course, it depends on what there are for more. Right, and that depends. I mean, if we have 20 more articles or 30, I mean, the more that we have, the more pages. Yes. Yeah. And the more time, which is why I requested another um, <coughs> voting booth because. Um, In uh, this last town meeting, we had uh, 19 uh, questions on the ballot, yeah. on the warrant, rather. And the other thing that concerns me is when we get into that many pages, um, our ballot machine's been wonderful, thank God, but when we get into more pages, we're going to have to think about getting a backup unit or a second one, 
because of the time, um, the time in which people are voting and entering their ballots, it's going to be mm -hmm. harder on the machine. Obviously, right. eight times harder if we had eight, not eight times, but at least three times harder. So those are things that are going to be up and coming. We may have to project for that as well. Okay, so but we do you do believe though that the thirty five hundred is going to be sufficient. I feel that's going to be okay, okay. unless things. Okay. Any other questions? I think that was a that was my biggest one, and I don't know why I have lost my I don't know I, I wrote it down here somewhere, but I don't know where I went. But Miles, um, order these. Come good. No, not bad. All right. <coughs> Sorry. Okay, so I will send over my. Uh, that would be very helpful to request. take a look at. And uh, you're, anybody's welcome to come when they do the. Tutorial. You'll let us know when it's happening. So yeah, yeah, it's going to be on Thursday um, before we open. Next week? Oh, no, November. Oh, November. After the election. Oh, after the election. Yeah. That's good. But, I mean, if, you, if you're if you interested in software, it's a pretty cool program, and I can show you what we're currently using. I mean, a, a, an example, today I did two buses for c &J. It took me an hour and a half. Right. Because of the state system. Right. An hour and a half for two. I mean, it was eleven thousand dollars. Was worth it, but but that ties you up for a long time. It, it does, and you know, most of my fleets, I have to do I close and come in before or after to do them because you know I can't tie up. The the long run. Okay. Yeah. So. All right. So we can. Well, I hope you feel better, Denise. Thank you. So we've got the Intuair information, and we'll look for the avatars and stuff yes. too, and we'll yeah, see uh, what makes sense. You know, I'm I'm in a group um, text with small towns clerks and um, people rave about the Avatar one over the interwear. Yeah. I mean, they're all fighting for the best program, but... So there are, there are other vendors? There too. are. There are. There seems to be about three in the whole state of New Hampshire that are really um, have it under control. Is it, I mean, we can, is it worth putting on an RFP um, to, to all of them and see... If we can get possibly. I mean, I know that you said you're working on a better number than ten thousand. I am. I'm gonna. I know the owner. I worked with Gary um, years ago when I was a tax collector, and uh, I was gonna call him. I mean, he. They are from Rollinsford. Oh. The original owners from Avatar, and um, they've been good to us in the past. And I think if we're gonna have all three systems, and they know we're a small town, they should hopefully. Well, we'll look forward to hearing it. We're going to work yeah. on it. All right. Okay. Thank well, you. thank you. You're welcome. And we're... Um, Have a good evening. Thank you, you too. We're going to jump back up to highway. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I saw George today while I was at town hall. I was here. Um, and he had some updates. Um, for the things that we have on, on, the, on the agenda. Uh, the transfer station phone. Uh, they did their experiment. And apparently uh, it works fine. Um... The um, uh, using the handheld um, at the um, um, highway at the transfer station. So he was suggesting that we don't have, need the phone in the transfer station any longer. Let's see. So um, if we're good with that. We can we can cut that. Um, um, is there any objection to doing that? No. No. If, if it works, that's great. Good. Okay. So we can. Um, we can talk to um, talk to Caroline about what next steps need to happen there. Uh, okay. Oak Street paving costs. Um, it was approximately it was supposed to be approximately twelve thousand dollars and change. It ended up being thirteen thousand. Um, we have we had money in the um, in the paving um, line to cover it. Thank goodness. Uh, so, but that's taken care of. So, so just want to make that announcement. So folks know, I don't have the exact dollar amount in front of me, I apologize, yes. but it was 13 and change, um, closer to 13, not closer to 14, I don't believe so. Um, and the only other thing that George had for us for this, uh, two other things, uh, the Sligo culvert, um, he's mentioned this in the past, but I don't know if either of you were here when he did. Um, he would like to talk to Hoyle Tanner, or, or have us actually talk to Hoyle Tanner, about moving the, um, the barriers, the Jersey barriers that are there now, uh, back, um, um, he believes we can get um, an extra four feet 
on that uh, on that road and reopen it even more. Uh, this is the, at the culvert that um, um, the furthest away from closer to Bear Roadside, um, so they can get um, a larger truck uh, through there. Um, Hoyle Tanner had had mentioned that they didn't think it was a problem, but he he wants um, us to ask them. So there will be obviously. Uh, a cost associated with that. So, are our folks comfortable with us reaching out to Oil Tanner to check on that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, what I, I think we I like a, a motion for that because the other one was was taking away a service to save money. So this one is to spend money. So mm -hmm. I'd like to actually have a formal vote on this one if we if we could then. So I'll move that we um, get in touch with Oil Tanner to assume, assess the cost of. Moving the barriers on Sligo. And, and the feasibility. And the feasibility. All right, I'll second. I'll second it. Okay, is there any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay, so I'll, um, <coughs> excuse me. I will uh, send an email to uh, Aaron over at Hoyle Tanner and see what he has, uh, what his assessment is. I'm writing a note, so you wonder what's going on. Okay, and the other thing that George wanted us to let us know, I know he sent an email to the board, but I want everyone to know, um, the, uh, the roller from Rochester, the, the paving machine, the roller, um, the city of Rochester, um, George contacted the city of Rochester to see if he could borrow one um, for, I think, for the fire station work you know, and a couple of other things he wanted to do in town. Um, they said, no, you can't borrow one, but you can have one that we're getting rid of uh, for free. Um, you just need to um, just need to replace the battery that's in it. And so George and so 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 Rochester said, "No, you can just have it. We don't care." There, it was on their on their 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 list of things they were replacing this year, anyways. Um, so they said, "No, we we don't even care about the scrap price. You can just have it." So George and uh, Ed took a look at it. Um, I mean, there's some cosmetic stuff, obviously. There's some rust and stuff on it that they feel that they can, they can take care of. Um, uh, the battery, apparently, that was in it was still under warranty. So they took it back to wherever they took it to. I don't know. Um, and we got a free battery, too. So they put it in the machine. It works. Uh, so we have a free roller. So it doesn't have to borrow it. It's not the prettiest looking thing, but it works. And um, so we don't have to worry about that anymore. We don't have to worry about renting one. Anyways, or borrowing one for the small projects that uh, the road crew can handle, taking care of. So, good for us. We got a, a free yeah. piece of machinery. Uh, the only requirement was that um, the city of Rochester asked that we take their um, their name off of it, and that's already been taken care of. Apparently, George and Ed scraped it off, so it wasn't much of a job there, I guess. So, so it was a good thing we got a piece of free machinery today. So, it's here in town, I guess. So. All right, so where are we now? Item four, we're finally moving into town administration budgets. Um, we have the revised budget. Um, I'd like to talk about that on Saturday well, when, we're, when we're all together. Do you, do you think, Denise, you'll be able to make it on Saturday? I'm pretty certain I will be there on Saturday. Okay, I, I mean, I, if not, it, it is what it is. I get it, but um, no, I, I want... I think I will be. Okay, so I'd like to... Um, I'd like to take that. Well, actually, it says review and approve. So I've actually already looked at it. We have it printed out here, I think. Yeah, we could we'll copy. Yep, I know. It's probably in the bottom. I just start at the bottom and work my way back. Yep. Oh. Close to the bottom. Yep, close to the bottom. I know it. So I guess we'll... Um, Give me a second, Denise. Sorry. So we've had it for. We've, you sent it to us, Sarah. Um, uh, what last week was it? Maybe. So we've had it for a week or two. So I've taken a look at it. I don't have any objections to um, to what to the, moving the lines around as you have them moved. Um, I, the only uh, only thing I would add is that this doesn't reflect other places and other lines and other budgets, rather. Um, that we could still, there's still some flexibility in, in some lines if we needed to move things around. So, and I'm, the flexibility in the department, department line 
that we haven't touched. Right, right. That's, I just want to make sure we we recognize that. So if we mm-hmm. if we needed to move things around again, so um, yeah, we can. Yeah, there's some flexibility. Although if they keep on spending, there it lessens the flexibility. Well, of course, of course. You but know, um, we're seeing more and more POs in the last end of the year than you know at the beginning, which is is they're right. You know. Yeah. So this is a reflection. The the changes are within the. Um, not the department budgets, but um, but with the uh, the lines that the select board proposes, right? That is correct. So just so everyone understands, so um, I've reviewed it. Miles, have you had a chance to I review did. it? Yep. Okay. Denise, obviously you had a chance to review it because you're the one who proposed it. Or, yeah. Uh, I'm 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 happy to approve it so we can be operating under this new one. Um, if, if if you all are, that would be good. Yep. Okay. Um, and that's what I'll be bringing to the budget as well. So to the to the budget, budget committee. Budget committee? In a couple of weeks. Okay, so fair enough. So they will have it as well. Um, so you want one of you want to make a motion then? Then we need to approve the um, the revisions. Okay. If, if Miles makes it, I'll I'll sure. second it. I should make one. So I, being there. I I uh, move that we uh, adopt the uh, rebudgeted. Um, quarter three rebudgeted. Quarter three rebudgeted for 2018. All right, I'll second that. Uh, okay. Any uh, any other discussion? All right, seeing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. All right, so we're taking care of that. Uh, budget planning. So we talked about this a little bit. Administrative support. We talked about this on Saturday. Um, I would like us to to make a decision. Um, as to what direction we want to um, we want to move, if there is a direction we want to move, uh, as as far as administrative support goes for um, for um, for the town, um, I will go last now. But I want to I want to put this put this out there first, though, Denise. Uh, you obviously are not here in the room, and so I don't want to put you at any disadvantage. If you want us to wait until next week, we can wait to vote on this. I don't. I don't. I don't want to be unfair to anyone. So. I mean, I, uh, I don't think I have a problem with uh, making a vote. Okay. All right. I just. I don't want because you're not here. I, I don't want. I, I don't want you to feel like you're, you're. I mean, you're participating by a phone. I get that, but I mean, it is different than being in the room. So I don't. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to push anyone. If we want to wait another week, but I, I would like to, if, if we're comfortable doing it, to move forward. But if not, I, I, I well, I'm okay with that too. Mm-hmm. So, are you okay as the person who's not here, moving uh, forward? We'll see when the conversation goes, and then if I feel like ah. I'm not here being heard, then I you got it. Ask that, for okay, that that is fair enough. Are you okay with well, going that way, Miles? Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. So I'm going to let you both speak first, and 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 it's going to be how you feel we should be handling. Administrative support uh, aspect of, of uh, the 2019 proposed budget, um, and then I will I will tell you where I'm coming from. Although I think I've already given you a sneak peek on Saturday. But. So whoever wants to go first, Denise, do you want to go first? That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I, my preference is a town administrator, not a town manager. Okay. And um, with that said, though, I believe that we also have to have a part time. Um, bookkeeper position to uh, do uh, some of the functions that Caroline does now because if someone takes over that job as town administrator, then more duties are going to be put on that job and so they're going to have to have that kind of support as well. Okay. Miles? Uh, I, I agree with that completely. Um, I've had a chance to talk with Caroline um, a bit more about, because that was one of the things I wanted more information on was what what's the shortfall, what's not getting done, and she um, enlightened me in that area, and uh, I think it's clear we can't really continue uh, on the path we've been going. Um, I think a town administrator uh, makes the most sense at this point for this town. Um, with more administrative support. All right. All right. Well, I guess it's not that much of a contentious argument this evening, but I agree with both of you. And I, I said this on Saturday, and I'll say it again. My back goes uh, uh, to the world as we're being uh, recorded, but 
I believe that we live in a, in a different time, we live in a different town, we live in a different age, where just because it was good enough at one time to have a part-time administrative assistant, it's just not feasible or logical anymore to have that. You know, I read through, I'm trying to remember now, I'm having a, you know, a midlife moment. Um, in the early or mid-1980s, there was a motion at town meeting to make the then administrative assistant to the select board full-time. And it was, um, was rejected. Um, which was a pity because obviously they needed it then too. And they didn't do it. And things have not gotten any easier for, for folks that serve on, on, on the select board. Or who serve in, in the administrative assistance position. Because every year more and more is placed upon on towns. Um, the state, I think the town clerk just mentioned it, the state <laughs> gives towns and counties, and the counties give to towns, more and more to do, um, more and more responsibilities that at one time maybe the state would have handled, um, and now they, they pass over to us. And it's, um, it's not fair, but it's, um, it's reality, and we need to be able to handle that. We need a level of expertise in, in certain things, in certain areas, that um, no elected select board member, regardless if they're retired or if they're working full time, necessarily has. Um, it's not only a question of, of time, of what, how much time select board members are willing to, to give. Select board members in this town are given a stipend, they're given a stipend, I think, in every town, but to serve. but. Um, it's, it's, so we're not doing it for free. I don't, I don't want anyone to think that we're not getting some sort of compensation, because we are, and we, and, we, and we freely ran with that level of compensation. I'm not arguing that I want more money. The, 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 the argument is, is that there are things that you need more expertise. You need more, more professional help with that, that select boards, I don't believe, are, are, are trained or are equipped to handle anymore. We are, we are yeah. what, the second to last town in all of Stratford County to have any kind of administrative, uh, town manager or town administrator. I mean, uh, you know, I talk about the bizarro world of Madbury, but <laughs> even they have a town assistant. I just only say that because they, don't have a, they didn't have a road agent. The select board handled it. The select board was the road agent forever. Apparently they just hired their first part-time road agent who's a retired select board member now, but anyways. Um, but even they have a, a town administrator to handle things. So uh, there, are, there are, in my mind, efficiencies that we are not taking advantage of in this town because we don't have the, 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 the you know, I would say, the proper level of staff that's needed to run a municipality. We just don't. We've gotten by for, for decades without doing things. Well, we can't do that anymore. We shouldn't be doing that anymore. The residents should expect more. So, Not to mention redundancies. Um, yeah. There is certainly that issue. I mean, we, we fell into the, 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 the board, well, this board, um, under a former chair, previous chair, fell into that pattern, too, of, of previous boards where it was one person doing a lot of the work. And, you know, we've divvied up stuff now, and it's not, it's, I don't want people to think that it's, that it's the level of, of, of the work. It's not just that. I mean, there is a lot to do, but, you know, we signed up to do that. But there's, there's the, the level of, of, of the, there's a nuance to, to dealing with, with the State Department of Revenue Administration that didn't exist even five years ago, six years ago. There are new requirements that they've, they've put on us that I, I have gone and used that tax portal. <laughs> I, have, I, I don't pretend to be the smartest person in town. I do have a master's degree, so I'm not a, a, a complete fool. I, I don't think. But maybe I am. I don't know. Some would argue, I'm sure. Um, but 
it's very difficult to understand that. Now, should every single person that runs for the select board be an expert in, in, in using the state's tax portal? Good luck finding in every single town someone's going to be able to do that. But when you have trained staff that, that specialize in these things, yes, they do. They, they are the experts in that sort of thing. So, I, you know, I, I think about managing contracts where, you know, we try to do the best that we can. And prior boards try to do the best they could, too. Are we getting the best bang for our buck for everything that we do? I don't know if we do. You know, we, for very large projects, we try to issue RFPs. You know, we, we've, we've um, as, a, as a board, past boards, and, and, and we'll see going forward if this will be the same thing we want to do, but we've stuck with one paving company because we were getting, um, uh, we had a good relationship with them, we were getting a good deal. And when we've gone out to RFP before, we didn't have the same buying power that large cities and other larger towns have, so we, we stuck with that one company. But still, is that the best strategy? I mean, the, when you have when you have a town administrator, and I've talked to other people in other parts of the state where, where they have the, 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 the staff members, there's a whole network, there's a, there's a support network that, that they can tap into so they can get information that they need to, to help be more efficient, help the town to be more efficient and to run better. So it's a big change. And then you know, it's, it's going to be, and it's not going to be a huge, well, I, we don't know yet because we, we haven't talked about the, the talk about it on Saturday, uh, the budget side, but it won't be a huge, it should not be, in my opinion, I'm going to say that, it should not be a huge increase to, um, to, to salaries. There will be an increase for sure if we go, to, if, if, it, if it passes. But are there opportunities to make up savings in other places that we're not taking advantage of. And that's what we need to be thinking about. And that's what we need to be looking for. And that's um, why I would support doing it. That's also why we've been going through the very painstaking and not always the most logical way of going through this budget is going line by line together as a group instead of having, you know, one board member themselves working on it and then talking about it at a, at a, at a workshop or at a weekly meeting where it's, it's a team effort. We're doing this together to look for places where we can we can make up the difference, um, and we hopefully we'll do that again on Saturday, um, to fund this position. Um, so, anyways, with that, I will get off my soapbox, and because uh, we're all in agreement, so there's really no point, but it's, um, it, I, it, I didn't come to this decision lightly. When, when people brought it up in years past, I would just sort of roll my eyes and say, please, and somehow we're getting by, why do we need this? Well. I'm seeing the, the, the real reason why why we should have had this all along. So, I mean, it's always easy to criticize when you're not doing the job, I guess. But, um, and but I, was, I was guilty of that. general pushback to us that it's yeah. really causing a lot of this. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's come to a head. Control. It has come to a head, I think, now. So, mm -hmm. But if the voters reject it, they do. So, I mean, it, it's, they, will, they will, you know, they're the final arbiters, of course, so, mm -hmm. as they should be. So, with that, is there, I'd like, what I'd like to do this evening, I'd like to have a motion to um, formally adopt a position that we are going to um, add into the uh, 2019 operating budget, the position of uh, town administrator. And then we will deal with the um, financial piece on Saturday at our workshop. So. Okay. Um, what about like a job description? I think we'll fill in the, the we blank. Will. Yeah. Well, we, that we will we will work on for sure. But what I would like is, is the authorization this evening to move forward okay. as a board, so we can plug in a number um, uh, into the into our budget workshop, so we can start really finalizing a lot of the things we've been thinking about in the abstract, and we can talk about other um, uh, other um, pieces that we haven't been able to focus on yet for salaries and things like that um, after um, after this vote. Okay, so I'll make we, that. I'm sorry. And then we can, then we can um, figure out the logistics of uh, what the position looks like. Okay, I, I, but we need to have a line where we can add it in and then plug that in. Yeah. Then we can so, so I'll make that motion to create the position of town administrator for the town of Rollinsford. I'll second. With, within the 2019 budget process. Mm -hmm. Within the 2019 budget process. Okay, and I will second. Unless Denise just did. But I'll, I'll, I just did. Okay, all right. All those in favor? Say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. So on Saturday. What about the contact position, though? Because I think you have to have both. 
I don't disagree, but within our budget right now, we have, um, we have, um, what's it called? It's called administrative support, right? Finance and administrative, right? Right? Oh, okay. administrative so secretary. We leave that one in and we're just adding this other one. Correct. Well. Correct. Okay, thank you. And, 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 and Miles brought up a very, very, actually I shouldn't say it this way. Whenever we bring up things, whenever you all bring up anything, it's valid because it's, it's what you want to talk about. We bring up a very valid point that we need a job. There's a lot more than just saying, oh, we're going to create this and, and oh, what we do, we're going to move on. We need to have job description. We need to look at what exactly we would, we would want out of this person and what the number would, would represent that we're going to be putting into the budget. So now yeah. we, we have we have authorized ourselves to move forward within our, our budget workshop process to create that line and then we can decide what that looks like. So we, we've moved on for that at least and um, we on to the next thing. So, okay. All right. Um, we have um, health insurance alternatives. I've heard nothing as of yet, which I'm not surprised. It's yeah. Been right. A couple of days. Um, Caroline did forward um, I, late in the day, so I didn't have a chance. I came home and from another meeting I had and changed and um, came here. So I haven't looked at it yet. But um, um, she did forward on. Um, some numbers on, on insurance, okay. some harder numbers that we didn't have yet, oh. on um, workers' comp, liability, and there's one other thing I, I'm drawing a blank on. So, but we have, so we'll have that for Saturday as well okay. to work on. Um, but I'm not surprised that we haven't gotten any uh, additional info. Yeah, workers' comp, liability, and unemployment. Unemployment. From the, our carrier yet. So I would be concerned if we don't have anything by next week. but. Um, that right. should be a little more responsive. But okay, so we, can we move off of the budget for now, and we'll talk. We'll, we'll be talking about it for hours on Saturday. So uh, newsletter. So tell me how um, I saw that you sent an email out to to department heads and committees and yeah, commissions and things. Have you heard anything back from anyone no, yet? Okay. No, I'm going to have to get on. Okay, so but that work is ongoing, and I I talked to. Caroline, today I've got to work on a keep working on a draft of um, uh, what we just voted on. Actually, um, what um, al the alternatives to, to mm -hmm. the town minister or a manager or nothing. Another thing I thought that we need to have something about recycling and the changes. To yeah, we do. We certainly do. <clears throat> Talk to Ed and see um, yeah. what he would suggest putting in there. Um, but you're right; we do need to have some more information about that because there's uh, ever evolving. What can what can be recycled? What what doesn't go? So yeah, I mean it affects everybody how they right. store things. Right, exactly. No, no, I get it. So we, um, not to mention the financial <coughs> excuse me cost to the town if. Um, if we it's don't. not done correctly, so right. for sure. Okay. All right. All right. So I follow up with um, Ed and Caroline to see what they think uh, would be good in there. Um, anything else in the newsletter? Nope. Uh, the only other thing um, I talked to the tax collector today, yes. and that was one of the questions we had for for the budget, but we will talk about more then. But um, she had mentioned that the company that we are going through, and the name escapes me at the moment, but over in Allenstown, I think they are, um, um, they, um, they will include the newsletter. Mm -hmm. It just, um, like last year, it, can't, it, it has to be on one page of legal right. folded. Yeah. And if we wanted, and, and there's no additional cost, so they'll, they'll, they'll include that. So. But if we're going to go over, there will be additional costs. We want to make sure we keep mm -hmm. it just a one page, double sided, so legal size. So it's, it's big, but so we need to be, as you know, judicious in what we uh, what we put in or we don't put in. So, all righty. Uh, deliberative session date. We have set ours. We set a a a, a, um, a, um, a snow date, and the ta school set theirs and their school their snow date. Their, their, um, their date is our snow date. So to be fair to them, um, I would suggest that we move ours 
to Wednesday. We had ours on Tuesday. The um, well, let me see. Well, let me pull it up. Here. So. sent an email about it, so it's not conservation on my calendar anymore for some reason. Do you have it? Um, yeah. So. We set ours for the 2nd, but there's no date of the 5th. Mm -hmm. um, and they said theirs for the 5th, I assume, but there's no date of the 9th. Yes. So, yeah. So why is it not? I don't know, because it's not in my calendar anymore. February 2nd, I opened that up. It's not there. That's not good. Hmm. For some reason, Groundhog's Day is in there twice, but uh, <laughs> cause I'm very concerned about remembering it's Groundhog's Day. And then Lunar New Year shows up, but not, okay. So, anyways. So ours, our, our um, snow date was going to be the 5th. I would suggest, um, to be fair to the school district, um, we move ours to the 6th. Yep. But we, we keep our, um, obviously, our the first date on um, February 2nd. Is there any objection to that? No. no. Are you okay with that, Denise? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we will move, um, move our snow date to February 6th. Send an email off to the school and let them know. Oh, oh. my phone is slowly dying here, Denise. So I gotta, I gotta step up on it. Okay, so uh, fire pond um, abatement. We've um, so Avatar um, met with um, met with Mr. Lavin um, uh, to discuss the, the possibility of granting the abatement uh, based on the information that is a fire pond. Um, Obviously, you both heard the conversation with the yep. fire chief. I think there are, there's two pieces to this. Um, we would need to um, allow, if we were to move forward with the, with the, the abatement request, it's past to pass the time to for those requests. If it is le legitimate that um, it's a fire pond and it's in good working order, it's accessible and all of that, we would need to decide on whether or not we even want to entertain um, looking at granting an abatement past the deadline. Uh, but before that, I think really we need to make sure that it's actually in good working order, it's accessible, yeah. and all of that. And, and Mark has agreed to go down and take a look at that. So yeah. that's my long-winded way of saying I think we should table this until we have more information from the fire chief, unless there's objection. Right. Okay. Yeah. So we will table that. Uh, the next bus stop, Upper Mill, question mark. Do we I know? Okay, thank you. Because we don't want it 
there. And then mm -hmm. we give them a deadline and they figure it out by them. Yeah, they have to, you know, they have to run it by the budget company as well. But, you know, there was a couple of spots I was talking about. Is, you know, the, um, but the one of them is down by the lower mill, you know, where the kids can be off by, by the parking lot. You know, they can be waiting there and not be physically on the road. Um, and what was the other one? Was it, was it um, maybe by the, um, the corner of the garage there? Was a possibility, maybe? By uh, Paul's integrity, by there? It, it, both it's old garage, yeah. 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 Um, so, I mean, it's mostly just to get them away from the portico area. Right. All right. Well, I will, um, I have mixed feelings about this. I, um, and I will tell you right up front, I am the, um, the ogre that gets his mail in the morning and typically has to come flying across the street and yell at children to stop damaging town property. Um, a couple times a week, actually, to the point now they see my car coming and they stop. So, But um, I actually had one morning as a child was pulling the, um, or it's now changed, but the, um, the railing out of the hole it was in. I, um, uh, Bob had just pulled in, so I went down and asked him to go talk to them, so I didn't have to. And uh, that child now stands over by the other end of the town hall. <laughs> he doesn't even go near the steps, but that doesn't yeah. mean he hasn't been replaced by someone else. So, mm -hmm. um, but, so, there's that. I, I, I one day had to tell kids to stop because they were karate kicking the columns. So I'm waiting one day to fall out um, as they're rotting away. Um, so I get it. I'm, I'm the first one to say, you know, kids get off my lawn. But, um, I'm also concerned about their safety, but where's another safe location? And, and yeah, that's going to be the school's problem. I get that. That's not our, that's not our problem. I and mean, I don't want to, don't want to create problems. <laughs> From what I read in the paper, the school district has their own problems um, that they're going to have to deal with. Um, so I don't want to create more for them. But um, I, I get it. I, I, I don't like them being here either anymore. And, and I don't. I don't know if there was ever a time when kids didn't do it, so I don't want to say it's a new thing, but um, I would be concerned about Paul's area. And mm -hmm. in the morning, I don't think that, well, it's up to the owners of the mills. They would have to say, give their blessing, but in the morning shouldn't be any issue um, because there's never cars down there, but in the afternoon, it's always, the parking lot's always packed. So, But again, that would be the school district's, um, the school board's um, um, issue to deal with, I guess. But so... I've talked enough, Miles. What do you think? Uh, so this is where the school, the bus stop has always been, or been for. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Know, I hate to ask the question: Are there parents hanging around? Or, no. Well, there, there was one more. Some. There are some. There are some. I mean, it isn't all the kids there, but there's a good amount of kids. And my biggest concern is that that stuff is not safe, stable. Someone's gonna get hurt, and then it's on us. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I don't disagree with that. Or move, if we have to keep it where it is, move it on the other side towards the apartments. Yeah. Not, not where it is. Right. You know, because yeah. at least it's not as dangerous over there. There's no thing that they're going to climb all over. One morning when there were uh, children trying to trying to pull the the railing out, they weren't successful that morning. Um, and then karate chopping, kicking the um, the columns, One of, there was a... I don't know if he's a parent or he's an adult at least um, in age. Um, was standing there with his hands in his pockets, not doing anything. They're telling him, he might not have been there, his kid. I don't know, but not to say, hey, what are you doing? Why don't you stop doing that? I mean, mm -hmm. I had to go over and from the post office and say, guys, you got to stop. You can't be doing this. I don't want anyone to think I go and screaming at children. I don't do that, but I do tell them they need to stop. I mean, mm -hmm. but uh, well, is it? I mean, is it safe in general? I mean, it's a parking lot. I know no one's probably there at 7 in the morning, whatever time the kids get picked up, but yeah. is there really a safe place? <clears throat> no, this there's vehicle traffic in and out, actually. There's um, people park there sometimes and run across to the post office if there's not parking spaces available. People waiting to come into the police department, you know. There's cars always, I see, coming in and out. And then there's parents that are 
bringing their kids and the kids wait in the car with them with this cold, you know, and then they, they hop out for the bus. So there's cars in and out. So there is that too. I don't know. The only other thing I can think of too, Denise, is um, when it's raining, the kids um, tend to huddle underneath the, the front steps yeah. to get out of the rain yeah. too. So I mean, I, I that's why I say I have mixed emotions I about this. It's not even just that. I mean, there's there's the retaining wall there. It's not very large, but where the flowers are and the flagpole, yep, yep. I mean, they've destroyed that in places. Mm -hmm. They jump all over the flowers. I mean, I don't, I don't sound like that person, but I don't know what's wrong with these kids. <laughs> they yeah. just, they really. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not the decision you have to make tonight. Let's think on it and talk about it again next week. It's just want to get it up. We want to have a conversation about it. Okay, so we'll table that for yeah. next week then? Somebody said, what about the church parking lot? I don't know. That would be the school board's decision. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, that's a possibility, though, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. They may say it's too far. That... So, I, mean, I don't want to speak with the school board. They can figure it out on their own. But there's no... There... I would be concerned about the kids crossing the train tracks. That's all. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, there is the, the safe way to go on the sidewalk by the Patterson's house. But uh, I'm guessing, and I don't want to cast aspersions, but... If there are certain children that can't figure out it's not a good idea to try to destroy the town hall, they might not be the smartest kids about crossing the train tracks. So I don't want anyone to get hurt. So <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, maybe that's not fair to them. But um, anyway, so we'll table it for now. If everyone's all right with that, we'll come back to it. But yeah, it is a good thing to talk about. Yeah. <clears throat> so the next thing we have up is recreation, the uh, snack refunds. Do we know? I should have, should have asked Dee when she was sitting in front of me, actually. Oh, you I can know ask, what? I'll um, give an answer for you. Um, I forgot to ask Dee about that. I can ask um, one of her cohorts has made the mistake of sitting through the meeting, so she's still here. I can ask her if there's no objection. I, I, do, know. I do not know okay. anything about the snack refunds for Camp Raleigh. Okay, so we'll, we'll follow. I'm, I'm, so I should look down and, and, and talk to Dee about it. I, I just yeah, haven't gotten that far. Yeah, probably were the ones that were going to do it, I think. Okay, so if we can follow up on that, because so, I know the auditor will want to know. All right, so we're going to table that then. All right, so we come to standing items, board member activities. What's going on this week? Um, so I hope to get some more information on um, some insurance options uh, and, uh, of course, our budget workshop on Saturday. Did the uh, planning board met last week? Planning board met, yes, it was last week. And is there any update on um, how things went? Uh, so we elected a new chair. Um, Caroline has agreed to be the chair. It was a little okay. reluctant, but um, I can imagine. Um, <clears throat> we we had one application before us uh, from um, Mr. Jennison to combine his two lots on Bear Road, uh, which puts an end to the discussion about oh. building a house on his back okay. lot. Okay, and his, and his now is okay. Um, that was approved. Oh, um, okay. We also talked about some changes to um, zoning uh, ordinances, which will be on the ballot. I think we stopped at four changes. Um, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't remember what those those are in, in front of me. But some are required about accessory dwelling units. Yes. Um, yes. The the building permit um, oh, yes. will, will be proposed to be changed as well. Okay. Um, we, I think, I don't know if you saw the email from, there's a, there's a resident that is interested in um, the alternate spot that's open on the planning board. 
Um, was it someone who wanted to be on the conservation committee? Uh, I, I saw that. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> someone to take that up. Yeah. I, I, John Hensman had reached back out to him. Um, to I see if he was still interested. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what that's. And if he is, if he can send us an email and we can have a conversation with him. I don't know who he is. I've never met him. So. So it sounds like he's new to town. He's a civil engineer. Could be helpful. Yeah. Yep. All right. Uh, Denise, what do you have going on this week? I think I'm pretty open because the uh, rec up candles for tomorrow, so I just have Saturday. Thank goodness. <laughs> All right. Well, I also have Saturday, and then something else that the historic committee has been trying to meet. Let's see the calendar is not this week, though. Now I'm in February now. Let me go back. Uh, let's see. What do I have? I'll be in tomorrow here at Town Hall to go through, um, you know, all the decisions we've made tonight and talk about uh, uh, the meeting with uh, Caroline, things that she needs to follow up with, things I need to follow up with, and then um, um, getting ready for Saturday. So, I'd like to do that, yes, but, um, all right, that's it for activities, I guess, I'm, unless something else pops up, I'm sure I'll, we'll, I'll go to it. All right, we'll go to it. So, yeah. Okay, Mike, I think I'm going to sign off. You don't want to listen to Dylan for me? Okay. okay, all right. We'll get better and we'll uh, uh, feel better and we'll uh, we'll talk to you on Saturday, hopefully. I'll see you on Saturday. Thank you for letting me do this Of course. Tonight. All right, have a good night, Janine. I'll take you night, guys. Right. Bye. Good night. Perfect time today. I've got 7% left in my battery. I'm going to get my new battery time. All right. Building permits? Yep. Um, so what, what is the... Procedure, just read off. Why don't I just do it for, for tonight, sure. and then you'll know for next week. Okay. All right, so the first, first building permit we have is 2018-098. You see that? Five Cottage Lane. Uh, they are replacing part of their roof. Um, and it is a $155 fee. So we do permit granted. Expires. We usually give them a year. Um, I'll do at least till. Well, this is good. I'm sure it's probably already been done, but I'll give them until June 30th of next year. And then we sign it. And at least two board members have to sign it. And it's been reviewed by Mr. Clark. Uh, the next is permit 2018 56, uh, 501 Silver Street. Oh, well. She hung up just in time. Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, they are doing some siding work. Um, Mr. Clark has reviewed it. It's a three hundred and five dollar fee. We had come up with a new system, but I don't remember what it is. I think I'm just supposed to read the number and move on. But okay. I, I don't know. I like doing it this way. Uh, permit, unless you object. <laughs> it's on here. Twenty eighteen dash zero nine four. It's three. No, it's not. Okay, there we go. Uh, 439 Spruce Street, I mean, it's a chamber of property like Newmarket. Um, it is in, probably new construction. new construction. It is, it's been reviewed by Mr. Clark, it is a $2,145 fee. We like those. And they always go back on the table. So, okay. And then we have... It was reviewed by Mr. Clark, but I didn't say that. That pretty much goes without saying. Um, 2018-095, 412 Railroad Avenue. It's replacing and relocating a swimming pool with a deck. I'm trying to... I know it's a lot with that big, but it's been... Re yeah, well, clearly, there's no space. It's been reviewed. Good for him. I didn't realize it went as far back as it does. Whatever. Uh, it is a $205 fee. Uh, 2018-097, 10 Highland Avenue. What are they doing? It's uh, replace a countertop, sink, faucet, and kitchen. So, some minor renovations, I guess. Uh, it's uh, been reviewed by Mr. Clark, a $75 fee. Uh, and that appears to 
to be the end of those, and we have two uh, deed of burial lots. Uh, the first is number NT18-06. For four lots, uh, four graves rather, uh, total cost is seven hundred dollars. Next is uh, deed of burial lot number NT eighteen dash zero seven is for two graves. Uh, total cost is three hundred and fifty dollars. So, and then I just go back in this red folder all the stuff too. And that's how we handle the uh, the red folder. Uh, that's something crazy to know and we play it by ear. Okay, <laughs> we wing it. So next up is our correspondence. So the letter to FEMA from the Ronsford Select Board. It's the policy of the town of Rollinsford that all employees are subject to overtime earnings, time and a half for hours worked after 40 hours within the same work week, Sunday through Saturday. Please let us know if you have any questions. For your so, so you know what this is. Um, FEMA, um, as a requirement for uh, the uh, um, reimbursement that the police chief is trying to get for the town, yep. uh, FEMA needed this. So if there's no objection, I will sign the letter. No objection. to Smutty Moose Properties, LLC, to whom it may concern the select board has been apprised of the following activity, 31 South Street, demolition and construction of stairs. It is quite likely that the above activity requires a building permit, um, et cetera, et cetera. Looking for All your right. signature yep. on that one. So, <clears throat> compliance letter for 31 South Street, uh, demolition and construction of new stairs. Uh, if there's no objection, I will. No objection. Send that off to Morgan Carmel. Also, a compliance letter uh, for 579 Main Street, yep. the renovations. Yes. Uh, so, there's no objection. I will sign it. There was, um, as I was going to town hall this morning, there was a uh, lumber delivery truck huh. delivering, um, I don't know, an awful lot of sheetrock through a second story window. <laughs> oh. So. They're doing some renovations of some kind, and when I left, they still weren't done, and I was here for, oh, two hours, so they were busy over there. So we got a building burn from them, so hopefully we'll get one. Next okay, so up, we have um, letters from Primex uh, on property and liability insurance, workers' comp, and employment compensation. I don't know if there's something... That needs to be acted on with these, or this. I think this is for information Saturday. for the budget. Yeah. So what I would say, yeah, these are uh, description of the rate changes. Okay. Some are going down. Some cases. Okay. So why don't we say hold for budget? Apparently, I can't spell either. <laughs> That over and we can stick that back in we'll okay. there. Awesome. Um, so similarly, I think there's a letter from the Health Trust here um, to Suzanne uh, um, with medical the rates. coverage rates. Yep. But we just we and we discussed those on um, on uh, Last Saturday, right? Saturday. That's where the ten percent increase. Yes. Okay. Yep. So then we. I was maybe just right on hold for Saturday. Okay. I mean, we've discussed it, but. Just so we have it there. It's in the folders. We're going to look at it when the time comes. Okie doke. Uh, Stratford Regional Planning Commission. Dear Mr. Rolo. The Stratford Regional Planning Commission understands that the majority of our member 
communities are now preparing their municipal budgets and therefore we're providing the following information for your budget committee's consideration. Um, the executive committee recommended to the full commission a 2.9% increase in the per capita rate. This increase is tied to the June 17 to June 18 CPI U all items. Additionally, there was population adjustment as dues for fiscal year 2020 were based on the 2017 population estimates. So, they're looking for an increase in the dues? Yeah. I'm trying to find this one here. There it is. Um, it should be towards the bottom. Yep. So it looks like, I don't know what the increase, oh, uh, $111.90 uh, change. All right, I'll just hold it for Saturday yeah. so we make sure we have enough of them. If we decide we want to stay uh, a dues pay member of the regional planning commission, we will have an actual dollar amount. Um, workers' compensation law notice of compliance. For a signature. Okay, required by law to report promptly to your employer on occupational injury, disease, disease. Oh, to employer, sorry. I'm going to display this poster so that it will be of greatest possible benefit. Okay, so it's just, this is the, so everyone knows this is the notice um, for the employees. Uh, it gets hung up um, mm -hmm. so they know what their rights are under workers' compensation, or, you know, who to call, that sort of thing. And then, I guess that's chair is supposed to sign it. So I will sign it. This is the same letter. The abstract regional planning. Oh, okay. So one was a photocopy and one was the um over here. And then next, I don't quite understand this, but I'll read it. Um, to Mark Wentworth, president of Wentworth Greenhouses. Um, oh, is that? I don't know. It's what it usually happens. <laughs> DES. DES <coughs> has completed its compliance evaluation of Wentworth Greenhouses located at 141 Rollins Road. The compliance evaluation included an on site inspection, September 27, 2018. Uh, did not identify deficiencies during the compliance evaluation. It is recommended that Wentworth Greenhouse explore energy efficiency incentive program at NewHampshireSaves.com. So it looks like they are in compliance. Okay, compliance. Well, that's good to know. They usually. And who is that from? DDS. DDS. Environmental Services. And we have a leaflet from Health Trust Annual Meeting. <laughs> which will take place December 6th at 9 a.m. Uh, in Concord. I don't know if you like insurance miles. <laughs> I like Do you, you want to go to their annual meeting? Um, I can I'm check sure the exciting. date. Um, it's December 6th. I can check the date and, and see if I'm available. I can write that down for <laughs> Interesting. That's it. Yeah, is that it? I should know what comes next by now, but no more. Is there no other correspondence. No other correspondence. You sign checks. Sign checks. And the, the payroll slips. Did you get all those signed? Oh, that's an excellent question. Uh, no. Oh, I didn't realize I had to sign. You can do it right now. Um, sure. Oh, is this paper? Yep. Um, I, I can do it. It's, okay. It's you fine. need to submit one at the end of the meeting. Um, yeah. Okay. So um, we will do um, here. I assume. Yes. Yeah. I want to sign it right now. Then we'll we'll stop it as we her. I don't want. She got to take notes for community input. So. That's all the folders then. That's all the folders. Mercy me. This, this has been through the photocopier some amount of Yeah, probably. You'll get to the point.
police after a while and then sign Bob's and then he, as a supervisor he signs all the other ones. Okay. So it's this guy we should pay that clip. Yeah. Okay. Trustees. They're that's taken care of. Okay. That's all of those. That's taken care of. It's usually okay. everything after the paper clip. You're kind of signed up. Okay. Awesome. That's that. For your input. Um, so you leave both. I was wondering as you explore the new software for the town clerk. Mm. And it expands into credit cards. If other town departments would be able to use that or not, is the question. If it would benefit. Because it may reduce um, some of the fees, like the rec department pays um, for their processing credit cards. I'm making a note of it right now. I clearly don't know the answer. Um, but she's supposed to forward um, um, the information that she got from Avatar. Um, I want to look and see. Well, I'm just not clear. I just don't know if it's specific to the town for transfer to other departments. I mean, this, that what she showed us all looked like it was just in her wheelhouse, but it doesn't mean that it's not, I don't know. I, I, mm -hmm. Or if, it could, if like, it could be beneficial to another them. department can piggyback on it for a small fee. Yeah, I don't know. It's a very valid question, which I don't know the answer to. And not that it has to do with you, but I have asked in the past why the bus stop does not go across the tracks. Um, because only those kids in the neighborhood on um, near St. Mary's are the only ones that have to cross the train tracks and the main road to get to a bus stop. And it's, I've been told that it's based on the number of kids th that live in that area. And so the bus makes one stop mm -hmm. down in the middle of the Yeah. Yep. And the number of kids in the area that would utilize that bus. So if there were 25 kids over there that would utilize the bus, they might go over there. Yeah, I, I, I'm happily deflecting to the school board because I have no idea how they decide that. I, yeah. Although I, I hear they don't answer questions, so I don't know. I, don't know, so <laughs> I, I tend to agree with that. But I was told that I was. Mm -hmm. Well, I have a couple of things. Three, actually. But based on, on them, couldn't there be some consequences for these children? Like community service that the police would enforce. Yeah, maybe I don't know. I um I don't know. I think that yeah. I mean, I it's know. ridiculous I to allow it to you. just happen and have nothing happen to them. I don't disagree with that either. They could be cleaning out cross street and picking up trash, and I'm sure there's lots of stuff we could find for them to do. I'll make a note of it. I don't know if that's even feasible. I, I don't know. I don't well, think. I don't I think know. it would have to, like, some actual damage would have to be incurred. Maybe it has. I, I don't. I don't I think it had to be adjudicated. Uh, the yeah. Criminal system. I don't think we can. I don't know though. I, 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 I'll make a note and I'll ask the chief. I don't know. I have to do that. Then the other is welfare. You typically tell me what the uh, oh. decision ah. was. Thank you. I'm amateurs. All right, me and All right, so let's uh, go back in time. Thank you. So in welfare case 2018-008, the board is taking no action. But sorry about that, Simon. No, that's all right. Got all about it time. And then the third thing I had was about the tax bills. Are you not going to have the Mollusfit Post Office mail them? We're going to discuss that on Saturday at the workshop. Okay. I got information okay. from the tax collector that we, we had questions um, uh, last week, I guess, um, when we were talking about it. And um, when I was in today, I talked to her about it, and I would, told her I would relay the information back to the board So okay. uh, during the workshop. So we will I, make I, the, I'm in favor of 
us giving all our business to our local post office. Right, I, I would like well. to keep them in business. Especially since how they're talking about maybe closing some. Yes, right. And they are, and I can see, you know, it's just not a good situation. Uh, any other community comments or questions? Complaints? Anything? All right. Seeing them, we are going to uh, adjourn at uh, about 9.15. Uh, see all of you that are interested on Saturday morning at 9 a.m.